Peace to the planet. What's up? It's Andrew Schultz here. I, I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. Uh, we are the brilliant idiots. Mm-hmm. And uh, before we get started, I want to tell you to check out getbevel.com today. Now, let me tell you what Bevel is. Bevel is the first and only shaving system designed specifically for coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. Why did it just say black people? I, I don't know. What? <laughs> we can't say it in today's culture. Isn't that messed up? It's specifically for coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. Sensitive it's for skin. black people. <laughs> yes. Okay. And Latinos that are pretty much black. That's right. <laughs> You can use code IDIOTS to get 20% off your first month at mm-hmm. getbevel.com. That's G-E-T-B-E-V-E-L.com. Now, I love this razor. This razor is very sexy. I didn't even want to use this razor because it looks like some type of award. Like you get this, <laughs> like, 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 like you, I've won something and they've given this to me. This is the best mustache award. Yeah, like like if, if you won the, you, you're the chef from the Little Mermaid. Yeah. Then you use this, you use this razor right here. Yeah. It's like a trophy, but uh, get bevel. Dot com. Uh, I used it. You used it? I thought it was great. You don't, you don't have coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. That's so. also true, but I use it because I figured if I don't have that, imagine how well it's going to work on me. Oh, you know I mean? got you. And it was great. It, it comes with, with all these lotions and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't even really grow that much facial hair at all. Uh, but uh, it can it, you know it comes with all these lotions and stuff and and all of a sudden I you know I put this on I have this foaming thing there's a little like brusher thing that yeah. you, it's it was amazing it feels like you know Eastern Promises that movie no Eastern Promises is this movie where this guy's basically getting a, a clean shave and then he gets his throat cut so it's everything before the throat cut got you you know just got a you. beautiful lather and I shaved it was close it was. It was great. I don't know? even shave. The only reason I shave because they promised no razor bumps. So that's when I decided to use Get Bevel, and mm-hmm. it worked. I shave because they pay us. Work. So I'm shaving Why every not? day now. You don't want to endorse something you're not using. Absolutely. I'm into it. So, I don't have any facial hair. I grow, well, a little bit. I grow facial hair like a Dominican mom. So we wouldn't steer <laughs> you wrong, man. Go, so, to get, go to GetBevel.com and use code IDIOTS to get 20% off your first month. Yeah, you got to use the code IDIOTS, okay? I said, I just said that. I know, I'm reiterating the importance of oh, it. Oh, you know okay. Because I mean? if they go and they use some other code, what's the point? Well, that's what idiots do. We reiterate, because actually he didn't even hear what I said. He wasn't paying me no attention, so he just said You know what? Did. I always pay you attention. That's messed up. You think I don't pay you attention. Oh, okay. My you know? fault. Well, let's start the show. All right, let's do it. How sweet to be an idiot. Cha-ching. All right. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. You know I, about that. We get like, money now. <laughs> Hold on. You hush for a second. I'm about to build you up. Uh-oh. Okay. First of all, it's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for subscribing and uh, ranking on iTunes. Everybody that's been listening to us on SoundCloud. And yeah, commenting on it, the videos, everything. Thank you, man. This has been phenomenal. It's yes, been crazy. And all you other uh, YouTube people that are stealing our content, I love it. I appreciate it. Andrew Schultz hates it. You know that's not true. <laughs> no, no, this is, I did have a little emotional moment where mm-hmm. I was texting you ferociously, uh, and where I was like, you know, we were putting out these videos, and there's a guy who's just better at YouTube, like you said. I think it's Apollo. I think his name's Apollo. All right, so Apollo, mm-hmm. uh, he basically takes our YouTube videos, puts them up on his site, uh-huh. and uh, they, they get way more views. I got upset at the Sneakerheads video that yeah. we made because now if you search on YouTube, Sneakerheads, we made this video. Uh-huh. Uh, ours doesn't even show up. Just his shows up. Even though Schultz's video has more views, mm-hmm. you got more subscribers on your page, you're worried. about the same. But my point is I want to, I, I, you know me, I like credit. Yes, you do. You know, so I, I want even though it credit. says sneakerhead starring Andrew Schultz, does not say sneakerhead starring <laughs> Andrew Schultz. Does not say that at all. All it says at the end, there's a little written by whatever. But I, you know, we both are the are the stars of that sketch. And well, we hey, let that shine I love through. when y'all steal our content. Rock out with your cocks out, okay? Now let's introduce- share our content. Yes, share our content. And no, I don't want to say steal. Share. You you made a great point. You made me rethink the entire thing. Yeah, like these, I literally called my manager and I was I was freaking out. And then I started thinking about what you were saying. I was these like, are fan pages. They, they love what exposure, we do. Yeah, they're sharing it. They're sharing it to people we don't, we don't know all of their friends. They don't know all our friends. Here, go with it. That that was the exact point I, that, yeah. that I was saying to him was how do we know that he's not bringing fans that don't know about brilliant idiots exactly. So. So in a way, we're benefiting from that. Absolutely. Everybody's got different audiences. But if you do want me to hire you to do our YouTube page so we can get the success that <laughs> Apollo, you have. If, it's a, if, if Apollo runs that page, which I think he does. Whoever's running this Power up. 105 YouTube page, yeah, hit us up. Yeah, hit me up. Yeah, hit Charlemagne up, and then let's talk, man, because we want to know how you're doing it. Word. Now, let's introduce our guest today. Our guest today is a very, very good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we used to work together at Clear Channel. 
and and you know she used to be a part of the Elvis Duran morning show then mm-hmm. she moved on to do great things with the couch yes you know and now she's going to be the next host of the view yeah <laughs> we're speaking out into existence into existence yes, throw it out it. there no no Let's make some noise for Carolina Bermudez <laughs> y'all yay what's up guys what's up boo oh my gosh this is so crazy i don't know why i was like nervous to okay. come here today cuz i haven't been behind a microphone in 2 years there was like this whole big say, thing where i couldn't be on the radio say the know? real reason why you were nervous why well i was going to meet andrew and no. you know i have a thing for jewish guys so well, he's not you jewish. know i'm not jewish so you're sorry kidding to let you me. he's faking what? He's the faking, nose. Faking what happened? Are you Italian? That's fucked up that it was my nose, not my last name, my circumcised penis. It was my I'm nose that gave it away. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I've actually met you before, Andrew, and yes, I was excited to come in and uh, hang out with you guys today. So thank you for having me. I thought you were nervous because you found out that Greg, my brother, who yeah. was filming this, is down to hook up with the Down Syndrome. <laughs> no. He's down for the Down Syndrome. I did want to meet him. No, but he, I know. he wants to know what kind of savage beast is at the club <laughs> looking for Down Syndrome, I did. Diana. I, well, I was curious to see who this person was. So, okay. yes, I'm and glad I finally met regular? him. I mean, I think he's kind of regular, but I don't know. I haven't he's got I a little to rain man him. tendencies about that- <laughs> <laughs> it's just, He's got some slight... Does he have toothpicks? Genius about him. <laughs> yeah. There's some genius to him. That's the thing. You, you're safe right now, but let your eyes separate a little bit more. Uh, and He's going to be it's sitting on. right next to you on that couch like, what's up, boo? <laughs> Carolina has nice. always intrigued me because she's like the most classiest, you know, coolest, well-spoken, smartest woman. But then she loves ratchet stuff. I am kind of, I'm a closet hood rat. I am. I do love, like, DJ Mustard. I love everything that he puts out. I knew you was going to love Mustard. I love him. Your favorite rapper is? Too Short. Too Short. Yeah. (laughs) I love Too Too Short's my, I love him. I've actually met him several times. loves Too Short? Like, Shake That Monkey is, like, one of my, I'm not even kidding you guys. That's, like, on my playlist. What's my favorite word? (laughs) Bitch. Why would you like this if you're a woman? Because I can't understand it. It just brings out a different side of you. When I met him, I said, will you please call me a bitch? And he was like, I can't do that. And I said, no, do it like in your too short like speak. And bitch. That, it, was the, it was probably oh. one of my best moments of my life. This and you're not hilarious. even from the Bay. No, actually, I do have family from okay. the Bay Area. Yeah, we need my parents you on the view. came over here. Oh, yes. We well, need you on the view. I, well, that's and my every hope. guy that comes on, you have to make them call you a bitch. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Joe Biden, I need you to do Absolutely. me something. Absolutely. <laughs> Please do it for me. No, I love me some too short. I do have family in the Bay Area. I'm kind of like all, you know, I grew up in Ohio, went to school in Arizona, lived in LA for a couple of years, moved down to Miami, Ohio. and then I've been here. Yeah. Charlotte Man has a theory, a theory about Ohio. What's that? What's your theory about, about Cleveland it? specifically? Yeah, Cleveland. There is no Ohio unless LeBron James is there. <laughs> LeBron James. You know, there is no Ohio. It's, no, I thought you said what? that's the new city. We were talking about you. No, were, I never said that. You didn't what? say that that's the come up. You said it's going to have the all-star game or some shit. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they got the Republican National Convention oh, coming in. 2016, there. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron's going back. They're going to win a championship one Republican day. Johnny Manziel National plays Convention. for the Browns. Here that's it. a big deal for Cleveland. We're looking for things. I oh, mean, honestly. We it's know. Like, it's, <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows. Dude, John Stewart had the funniest tweet. Did you see his tweet? He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, what is happening in the world where the two most happiest places are Cleveland and Germany? Right. It's true. <laughs> no, it's true. What it is happening so in Cleveland true. is a third world country. When yeah. LeBron, when it damn near it's is. It's the forgotten city, I like to say. Because, you know, there's a lot of people in Cleveland, in, o- in Ohio specifically, like yeah. where I grew up. They have great people, good hearts. They're like really passionate. They're passionate about, you know, their, yeah. their hometown yeah. sports and they're really, really good to each other. But it's just... The Cuyahoga River is littered with like broken dreams, you know? I yeah. mean, it's just like yeah. there's nothing going on there. So for LeBron to go back, I think it's just an excellent thing for the city. FYI, give me my props. I've been calling that for two years that it's LeBron true. was going yeah. back to Cleveland. No, definitely. I, I remember you were definitely saying and that. And to all those people in Cleveland, I think it's important that we tell them, you know, you can move. <laughs> it is not illegal. There are other right. places in the There's world. There's no border. Like, there, yeah, this is it's not like, the Truman Show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get in a boat yeah. and then fucking go down that Cuyahoga River. Yeah, Cuyahoga, but Whatever yeah. it is. Uh-huh. Hop on a Pepsi bottle or some shit that's floating in there. But that's why it's so big that LeBron went back because people leave, but they don't come back. They don't. You're right. And Think they about it. 
They don't bring it back to the city. Brilliant. That's it. And he left Miami <laughs> he left I know. to go back. Of all places. I know. It's who like Miami is Miami? sexy. Hold on. Who leaves Miami to go back to Cleveland whose parents didn't recently die? Ex- listen. <laughs> that I, is the only I reason gave, to go back to Cleveland. I gave LeBron James hell. I called myself a heat hater. LeBron, all your sins are forgiven. I have yeah. nothing bad to He's say about Messiah. you. He's the Messiah. He really that, is. No, it is It is really the nicest. And brave. It's like, like to me, that's the most competitive thing you could do. Well, you know, I think as there's an a athlete, lot of pressure. But there, there's definitely pressure. Yeah. But, but I feel like deep down, he, it's like he want. it's like Jordan playing baseball. This is his baseball. Can I do this? But see, sometimes yeah. you have to do that. I think like in life, and I can actually speak about this from my own professional career. It's like, yeah. you know, you have to take chances because, and it's not like just some BS theory that people say it. Sure. You have to act on it, you know? Yeah. And so like, that's why I always say like, do you want to live your life saying, I wish I could have, or do you remember when I, Word. you know what I'm saying? Word. So it's like, that's why it's like, even if you make some mistakes, it's okay because you had a life experience. And I think this for LeBron is going to be a defining life experience. I think it's going to teach a lot of people, you know, yes, he's making a ton of money, but mm-hmm. there's a lot more that goes into it. So I think he's looking for fulfillment. I think he went to Miami. Mm-hmm. He got those two rings. And he didn't feel fulfilled. Well, because he left these people behind, yeah. you know? I mean, you, when you leave your people behind, there's something there. There's like an emptiness. We're getting really super deep here. No, right it's now. No, 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 but it is, it's the truth, you know? Yeah. So I think that once he fulfills that, then he can go on to do whatever else it is that he wants to do. One ring know? in Cleveland is worth six anywhere else. And he said that. Yeah. I said that like th- two months ago as well. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the exchange rate is, is <laughs> <laughs> the ring exchange rate is definitely in the favor of Cleveland. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, listen, him yeah. going back to Cleveland is the greatest charity work I've seen since Justin Timberlake bought NSYNC out at the VMAs. <laughs> like, neither one of them had to do that. Like, like, neither, like neither one of those guys. Did you see Joey Fatone? Oh, was my so God. Was so, he was, like, wheezing. How was, hilarious oh would God. it be? How hilarious would it be if we really found out that Bosley hair treatment was centered in Cleveland? <laughs> I went back for the treatment. Though. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> nothing new with you guys. I want that fro. The I want a fro. The sponsorship. Yeah, no, exactly. it's gonna be a good thing. Though, and when so. he does shave, he does use bevel. <sighs> hey now, <sighs> good one. And don't forget <sighs> to use idiots. That's, that's the code. Ah, idiots. That's hey, right, yeah. LeBron. Use that idiots. Code. So how long were you in Ohio? Um, I was born and raised in Ohio. I went to Miami wow. of Ohio my first year. Okay. I transferred from there to Arizona State. And then um from Oh shit. Yeah, I'm one Yo, of those. Do you know about Arizona State? No, what happened? It's the Arizona land State. of the plastics. Fuck plastic. Nobody's using plastic. There's more STDs in that fucking school. No, I'm than saying the any, implants yeah, and the, everything. Like the people know Arizona State for the fucking people right? in Arizona to get titties. I didn't oh, know that, bro, dude. Arizona is this fucking wild place. It's heaven. It's all all the tw- all right. All the twenty year old dudes okay are dating forty year old chicks. They I love are that. Beautiful. Yeah. All the forty year old dudes. Dating twenty year old chicks totally. in Arizona. Bro, Arizona, you don't absolutely. Even know what this yeah. place is so crazy. If you get a DUI, right? You have to live in a tent city. I yeah, and that. you have to wear pink. He makes you and Sheriff make, Arpaio. He makes you wear um, pink, like a, a pink. Get-up. Emasculates you. Yeah, you're, you're literally sleeping out in a tent, and you can leave and go to work, and then come back and sleep in this tent for and a week or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you have to, dude. It's. Arizona is like a fucking different country. It's well, you know crazy. what though, but I feel like I missed out because did you, where did you guys go to? I went to I UC went to Santa Barbara. Okay. I didn't go to school. Oh. I graduated from school of hard knocks. That's right. Crack. That's right. You went to that ghetto university. There you go. Okay. Ghetto so university. um, no. So um, <laughs> GU. I went Ari- to GU. <laughs> Arizona State though, I feel like I kind of missed out because it wasn't the typical like you go to the bars and you like you know drink beers. It was like you go to these clubs and you're mingling with like NFL players with like the superstars that come through so it was like I never really got that experience like the frat house kind of thing it was more like of a sophisticated but don't you know, the dorms out there just like I didn't fucking. live in the dorms uh, I didn't live I transferred so I missed that like freshman year experience you are, but you are lucky yeah totally. you transferred from Ohio to I Arizona. transferred from Miami of Ohio to Arizona okay. State yeah yeah so then after that I went to LA I tried to do the whole thing like where I was going to be a TV host and then I realized like that place is it's no joke hold on so right out of college right out of college what was your major by the way broadcasting and you went right yeah. to LA 
right to LA. Yeah. Why LA instead of a smaller market? I thought that you usually go smaller. Because I had big build. dreams and mm. I was I had Word. a very inflated ego and I thought I could do it. You know what that is? That's what? from taking all that dick in Arizona State. That's what that is. <laughs> what That's sorry? what Arizona State does. People Hanging tell me that she's fine as hell. You got good pussy, you feel like you can take on the world. <laughs> horribly inappropriate. They don't even have Puerto Ricans at the what, what is the background? <laughs> Puerto it's only Mexico though. They saw Puerto Rico. They were like, holy shit. I am Nicaraguan. I am Nicaraguan. Whatever. Yes. They're like, you guys yeah. coming five, six and up? No. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> you're terrible. So, no, so I went out to LA. Okay, so for all the for college kids years. listening, how'd you get money to go from college to LA? Honestly, I have amazing parents. I had a okay. wonderful support system. I did have to work through all of that and stuff. And so, I mean, really the lesson is, number one, do what you want to do because I never, ever had any question what I wanted to do with my life. I always wanted to work in broadcasting. And so, um, after that, going to LA, um, you know, I learned so much about the industry, about myself, you know, I mean, just really what it takes to make it. Now, you're speeding through this. What did you do in LA? Well, you got Auditioned. You, you slept on couches? Well, who'd you stay no, with? No, I can, actually... Can, can I ask horrible. a question? Because I think a lot of people who listen want to go to LA and they want to be in entertainment and right, some right. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is that like when you go from a not small town, but was, you know, yeah, was, absolutely. to LA? What is that like? How do you even get started in a city Exactly. Like, yeah. How do you? You look for an agent and you find like a third tier agent because you haven't done anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you have to build a reel. I mean, this is these are all things that people don't tell you, you know, so you work on the student films, you work on the independent, you know, right. productions and things like that. And you and hopefully you make the right decisions. Like luckily for me, I never did anything that would hurt me later on in my career. But when Why? you're young, and you didn't suck dick in on camera. Your way to the no. Top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no, you got I that mean, practice, Arizona State. You're not gonna you're not utilize that shit. Come on. No, no, no. You know, what I mean, That's when a you're double young, major, he did broadcasting and blowjobs. Never. <laughs> no. Oh my god, you're horrible. No, but I mean, as a young girl, you're impressionable. You want people to yeah. pay attention to you. You know, right. you want to have that edge over other people, and you just have to make smart choices. You know, and so um, for me, it really wasn't going anywhere. You know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to break in. You're competing with women who are, you know, who look just like you, who are probably prettier, who may be and smarter will, will and do will do those will things. Exactly. And so um, for me, that was where I had to kind of reevaluate. And, Did anybody um, try to get you to? Absolutely. The happened? casting couch is real. Really? All right, let's the talk about this. The casting couch is so real. That's my Look, favorite Greg porn. is backing me up. Yo, Greg, so, Greg goes to all the casting couches for those like charity drives for the Down syndrome. Like, <laughs> you know when they're doing a commercial and they got the girl <laughs> there who's horrible. like, my favorite bumble girl is. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, he's the girl. He's the guy that, that films those and tries them out. This and he's so like, horrible. how bad do you want this? And she's like, I want ice cream. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay, two, two questions. This is horrible. Well, you're you're so, so wrong. Casting couch, casting couch. Casting so, couch. Right, no, first question: Do you know anybody who's made it because of the casting couch? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, you okay. hear stories like in the industry of people like um, what was the one rumor that Lindsay Lohan was spreading about uh, Jennifer Lawrence saying that she didn't, you know, she do came up on people. The yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Jennifer Lawrence. She was accusing Jennifer Lawrence of getting all of these huge get- deals and things like that because she fuck somebody. Yeah, I, I don't think it's nothing wrong with the casting couch if you actually have talent. Like, if you're talented and all you have to do is suck this dick just to get ahead, suck the dick. What? Are you kidding me? Nah. What is wrong nah, with nah, you? He's making an interesting he's, point. What? If you already got the talent and you know yeah. you got the talent. Then you don't have to do that. Is True. The so then that's where you're offended and you say, absolutely not. I can do this on my own. But if I'm offering you just a little and that's cheat cold, <laughs> And that's when he gives your shit to Jennifer Lawrence. Exactly. Yes. Well, exactly. I got another talented girl here that will suck exactly. it. Exactly. Looks like you're going to be playing Hunger Games yeah. without any food in your stomach. I'm a, I'm a huge executive. I'm looking for a talented girl yeah. Yeah. who'll suck my dick. Right. Listen, who isn't? <laughs> who, who in life is Sucking dick within the... itself is a town. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, how the fuck are you going to act if you can't act interested in sucking this dick? Okay, you know what please. I mean? That's you guys are horrible. That's so wrong. And you know what? It's a huge double standard because, well, actually, no. no you know not, what? We don't get that chance. You know how yeah, quick you do? I would eat some pussy? Do you? Oh, my God. No, no, no. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about I'm talking about gay. Dick. About, yeah. yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's real. Nobody's asking a girl to scissor fuck a girl for a role. No, no. You know what I'm saying? So that's my point. It's different. Like, if somebody was asking girls to eat pussy to be in a movie, that's one thing, right? Uh-huh. Do you not like that word? I mean, really just, I've, did, I've never done this on a microphone where people are allowed no, to like say these words. Listen, this podcast like, is not practice for the view at okay. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, once you're done with this, view is going to be a breeze, all right? No, I'm going to throw the word pussy out every once in a while. Okay, great. Right, Go listen. for it. Okay. okay. So nobody's nobody's asked you know, to, to 
chow box right or whatever right so um but us sucking dick that's a big life you know what i mean that's a game changer like okay. if that's like that's a game changer for a guy. So you if know, I'm trying to change your life as an executive, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make you the next Brad Pitt, the next Matthew McConaughey. You want to suck some dick? Well, you know what? Wow. Even in the audition would process, you a- would you do no. it? No, I wouldn't personally. You would, if this was the deal of a lifetime. This was yeah. like a, a three picture deal that you. you I mean, nah. there was going to be action figures it, of Charlemagne, everything. It have to be life changing to the point that I can live with myself. Like just the tip. What about that? Would you? Mm, no. No. I, you know, I don't like just the tip because the tip is the hardest part to get in. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. Oh, just the I'm tip of your yes, mouth. Yes, exactly. Oh, I thought the tip. Would in you your just butt. like? Yeah, just the. Would I kiss a dick? Would yeah. you kiss a dick? Would you kiss a dick? <laughs> for, oh, three right? picture deal. Hold on, ready? With Here action figures. Here I mean, I'm action telling figures. you, this is like right. a huge deal. Merchandising, merchandising, so you got it all. How about this? Not kiss it, but you know when you have a snap and you just blow into it and you make that, it makes that sound like the like. Whoo- yeah. Yes. What if, would you blow into the dick hole? <laughs> just make the hum- the <laughs> whoo- once once that whoo- sound came out, then automatically you get the three picture deal. Right. Go for it, you guys. I mean, I would think about it. I would. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but it would. It would probably hurt my feelings that I even thought about it. You're sleeping yeah. on your friend's couch in L.A. You don't have a place. You have like this ratchet car. Nothing is working out for you, and this is the the gig of a lifetime. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna. Pr- I'm gonna get on my knees to pray <laughs> for like a year. If that type of being on my knees don't work, then hey, man. Yeah. What if you got up to heaven and it was like, listen, you were praying all that time, and I was giving you dicks to blow into. <laughs> 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 what the fuck you think? That's your opportunity. That gave you 24 right. dicks. That's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Steven Spielberg's dick was right in front of you, Sean, man. You didn't realize the blessing? What the fuck oh is wrong with you? You did a blue on your blessing, yeah. been blessed. How many dicks it. I need to put in front of you, young man? You think I'm just going to give you three-year deals out of nowhere? <laughs> oh, that is so funny. That's so oh fucking funny. God. So, you've had this happen to you. Yeah, I actually have. Like, I went to an audition, yeah. and... um. In the, they give you these sides and they just like tell you what to read and you know you go in and then they say okay well you know they turn the camera off well now would you be willing to do nudity um well it depends you know if it were tasteful well you know can you unbutton your blouse just to show us like what you would be willing to do well great creeps I would be willing to do sense. it if it I would be willing to do it if, if it made sense in the script I'm not talking about like doing it in front of you right now you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it was just like situations like that where it kind of made you feel skeevy and that's where I was like yeah you know I'm not ready to do that right now but if you offer me the part we could discuss it so those were things that have happened but don't they need to know that before they offer you the part but why do you need to see my breasts in order to decide if I'm good for the part like that has nothing if to do with it if the part is you having breasts and well, yeah, the breasts clearly being out, I have them yeah but you they know, could be but crazy like, looking no they're not but you know like you can't go, no, what if she was reading for something like a political role like Hillary Clinton and she's giving a yeah. speech or something like well take your shirt off right no, that, that has nothing to do nothing with to do it with nothing. exactly and so it's more for them to get off and then the the like the big thing is when they turn off the camera and then they say, oh, okay, so now are you willing to do a little, uh, you know, let's let's do some offsides. And you're like, okay, fine, whatever. You know, you're going with them and then they have somebody read with you. Then they have that person leave and then they say, okay, so now what are you willing to do? Really? Yeah. They say, yeah. what are you willing what to do? What are you willing to do? And I'm like, willing to do for what? You know? So you have to be smart. You have to be, you have to have a really solid foundation. I have a question. Well, at least you know you're sexy, though, because ain't nobody asking Gabby to the Bay offsides. You know, oh, that's What are you willing here. to no, do? That, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> have you ever been in an audition and they didn't ask you what you're willing to do? And then you were like, is he not trying to put me on a casting couch? No. Get, get out of here. Like, no, well, no. You start looking at your outfit and shit. Maybe, I, mean, uh, <laughs> I know. I start like sprucing up. No, no, no. Never anything like that. So yeah. Um, so there you go. Is That's that what made you want to leave LA? What made me want to leave LA was that I wasn't gaining any traction. You know, I mean, you can be out there and you can grind for years. And then you see like I was waiting tables and, you know, you're waiting tables next to a 32 year old mom of two that has been out there for years. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And not not to knock that, because, listen, if you have children and you're working and you're doing the right thing, go for it. But, but it I didn't want to. You got to say fuck. Yeah. Your yeah. I didn't want to get in that situation. So <laughs> you have to say fuck your dreams. <laughs> no, it does. It no. comes to the point in time. You're 32 and you got two kids. You've been out there for 15 years in LA and you're really not dreams. making it anywhere so you have but, to re-strategize I think but That's I, where... I think when it comes to that you know is if your dream is to be an actor mm-hmm. right and or, that's actress. The only, or an actress and that's the only thing that's going to make you happy 
you could be miserable doing another job. You might as well be miserable trying to achieve your dream mm. unless it takes away from your children. But right. if you're making just as much as a waitress as you would be a secretary or whatever else you could do at that level, right. you might as well keep going after your dream because that's the only happiness you're going to get. Well, there is that. I mean, I think there's something to be said for people who are passionate and who won't like succumb to whatever else it is that's out there, like being a secretary because, you know, but there's also health insurance. You got to take care of your family. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to take care of your family. And so that's why um, I heard about this radio thing that was going on down in Miami. And um, hold on, you're speeding again. You did not just be in LA and wager some tables and you just heard. I did move back home. People want to hear about this shit because. See, I feel like so weird talking about it. I realize myself. how it's many like, people you're you're the special guest. Oh, thank you. We're here to talk about Carolina. Okay, good. Okay, okay fine. And, you know, and, <laughs> but no, but if people want to know that, I'm sure. Yeah. How often do people hit you up? You know, and yeah. ask you, yo, how did it? How did you go from South Carolina to the fucking biggest radio market in the world? Yeah. You know, that's right. a huge. It's a huge jump. You know, yeah, because it, it means a lot. Because there's a lot of kids that are fucking in South Carolina right now, going, "How the fuck can I go to you know be an actress Absolutely. or something like that? How Very do I true. avoid the casting couch? How do I do all yeah. this shit?" I want to yeah. expound on both of your points too. What you said about uh, you know, having a job and your dreams. I always tell kids, what, it's okay to chase your dreams. You can chase your dreams for as long as you want, as long as you're dealing with your reality. Ah, Absolutely. Yeah. Long, Living your reality. That's it. Yeah. As long as you got an income yep. coming in, you can take care of yourself, pay your bills, take care of what you need to be taken care of. Be a rapper. You can chase your dreams all you <laughs> no, want. Because, exactly. because if it matters, <laughs> you'll continue to do it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you'll you'll wake up at three o'clock in the morning and if you have to go and intern at a radio show and that's the only chance that you get. If you're truly passionate about it, that's what you're gonna do. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, but absolutely. you still have to like take care of your business on the side. So um no, I moved back home because my parents were like, That's it, we're not helping you anymore. So how is moving back home? Do you feel a nightmare? Back home to Ohio. Back home to Ohio Fuck. with my mom and dad, and like I'm 26 years old at the no, not 26, 23 years old. At so the you moved back because you had to, not because you wanted to. I moved to. back because I had. This to. is why LeBron is the man. Okay, Shout out to LeBron. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is why LeBron is the man. No, no. But here's a, here's the situation. You're from a small town. Small town. Yeah. How shitty is that? You're the girl who got out of the small town and went to L.A. to make it. Yeah. Now you got to come back. And now my dad's friends are like hitting on me at the bars like when I go out at night. And I'm like, I know you're married. That is so creepy. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, how old are you now? I'm 20. How old am I now? I mean, today? no. And at the time. 23. 23. So I went back at 23, basically. To them, you are a 23-year-old pretty ass loser who's probably desperate pretty now. Ass loser. <laughs> pretty ass loser. <laughs> probably desperate now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so um went back there. My parents were like, look, you need to get a job. And so I was like, I, I think back in the day it was like monster.com, what you would like yeah, look at for like jobs and stuff and like that. Yeah, and yeah. my girlfriend, my one of my very close friends, she was like looking for jobs. There was a freelance PR job for the Latin Billboard Awards. And I was like, I've never done PR. I I've never done any of this stuff, but I put my resume in and they took me. And so get the fuck out of here. It was in Miami for two weeks. And basically what I was doing is like checking in artists and, and you know, I faked it. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I've done PR before. I was going to ask you, did you lie on your application? Absolutely. I did. Yeah, I lied because <laughs> I wanted to get out of Ohio. So um, I went down there and it was like a two week conference. And um I'm checking in these guys one day from a radio show, and um, the one guy says to me, he's like, you have a really amazing voice. I said, well, thank you. And I'm like, okay, no, I won't go home with you, you know? And so he was like, no, he was super nice, and he goes, you should really think about doing radio. And I said, no, I'm going to be on TV. And he was like, ah, I would think about doing radio if I were you. And so um, I said, well, I don't know anything about it. He was like, I'll teach you everything you want to know. And that was Eric V from the Baker Boys. And Get the he, fuck out of here. he has been a mentor, a brother, never once was like trying to be grimy or, or sleazy. And um, he took me in. And that's where I that's where my radio thing happened. Wow. Um, yeah. I never heard that story. Yeah. Yeah. Eric V. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, if he did try to do something. Well, he knew. He knew I was like not going to go there. He kind of deserved it at this point. That's what, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, don't he deserve the tip? It's just like the tip. A of moment it. of weakness, you know, where it's just like, like come on, when let him. You hit look it. at your life. No. You look at that big rock on your finger. Oh, you I? look at the fact that you're going to be on the View. No, I, and, what are you guys talking about? No, we're speaking no, it no. into existence, Carolina. Yes, yes. Well, no, we're going to get please. to that. Okay, but you know, don't you feel a little bit like you know, maybe I could just just. One downstroke on a on a piece, <laughs> no. not a whole jerk. A flash, of, just a down, never. A flash. No, actually, 
classing no. with your bra on. No, at no, least. no, 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 no. No, it was never like that. And actually, that was the reason why. I mean, I have just a tremendous amount of respect for him and just the things that they did for me as a no. You know, I'm like some little girl that had no clue what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I got lost my first day. Like I, I was super late, and they, you know, they just took me under their wing and and really helped me out. Now, I want to so. go back to one thing. You said you lied on your application. Absolutely. Why is it okay to lie on the application but sure. not lie on the casting couch? Because it's it's both, you're both cheating. It's two different things. Would it be a lie on the casting couch? No way. Oh, like literally lie. Literally lie. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it's two different things. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I pride myself on being an honest person. But you know what? Sometimes you have to tell those little white lies in order to like. A resume is to lie. Yeah, you, to inflate yourself, to make That's yourself why look you better. That's why you make a resume. You, you fucking lie. Up. Yeah. yeah. You know, for me, it was the opposite because, like, I had felonies and stuff. So when I'd ever get to the point where it was like, have you ever been arrested? I'd be like, yes. And you got to describe what you. I would describe it in detail. You would? Yes. And you know what that would make people do? Like, well, shit, if he's telling us that, he must be an honest person. Let's really? Hide again. So, well, you got lucky. You know, you they're, take, lucky. they're trying to take that away. There's that box on the on the application. They're no, they can't to, do that. They can't do that because I need to know if pedophiles are working at Disney. World. So that's the thing. It, you're supposed to do work. You're supposed to mm-hmm. do uh, your due diligence as an employer mm-hmm. to check out if there's a rapist or whatever. All yeah. these other things. But I think that box is really there because people are trying to steal, or like the employers think, "Oh my god, this guy might steal from me." And literally, I'm thinking, like, wouldn't you want a criminal working for you because they get caught? Right. Shut the fuck up. Right. Dude, like, I'm actually every, following what no, he's but saying, though. Like, That's like the... More, I'm more concerned that I get what you're saying. Like, everybody like, steals on the job. Everybody. Right. Well, I don't a lot talking, of people. A, a majority I'm, I'm of people. I'm talking about yes. if you work at Walmart, you're going to take a fucking hamburger when you go home. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, take yeah. a fucking... You okay. know, not a lawnmower, but, right. a, you know, some shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Ride that out. But exactly. Like, but <laughs> criminals, they get caught, so at least you'll be saving money by, by knowing what you get, exactly. knowing what you're getting. I, okay. That's why I feel like take the box away. Who I don't, I don't the think they should take it away, though, because like it was a case that I read recently this week where it was a bunch of uh, pedophiles and kids at, working at pedophile. Disney World like, and they were well, messing with concerning. the kids. Yeah. 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 But yeah. not for pedophiles. I'm saying like, you know, it, rapists, pedophiles, murderers, that kind of shit. Yeah, but then you, you, can't, you can't separate that, though. Yes, you, you can. can. You can't say, okay, if you're a pedophile or a rapist, check this box. And then if you're not, Absolutely. then go, you can't no, do that. No, you just that. have a I mean, rapist, like, pedophile box. Matter of fact, they should not be trying to get a job. Who's going to hire a pedophile? It's very difficult. But you know what, though? On the other hand, there, are, yeah. there it, this is the argument, is that once people do their time and they're allowed back into society, who are you to keep them from... You know, pursuing. I am a judgmental person. I'm not with arguing preju- for with it. Yeah, pre- here's pre- the prejudices. Thing. No, no, I get what you're saying. I get what I get what she's saying. But here's the difference: pedophiles don't stop being pedophiles after you punish them. Well, I I truly believe that people in your neighborhood should know where yeah. a pedophile no lives. Shit. Especially, but they make you put a sign in your yard. It's like an ADT sign. Right. Exactly. We need and to so- tag them like tigers oh, in so- Russia. <laughs> you know how there's only 400 like the tigers yeah. left or pigeons or whatever like yeah. that. I honestly feel we need to tag them. I agree with that too. It's like it's certain crimes. No, you got to wear that forever. I got to know you fucked that little boy in his ass forever. forever. Yes. I got to know you killed that old lady and did 60 years forever. There's no race in that. Mm-hmm. No, I need to know. You making, you know, evolve from that and become a productive member of society, but I still need to know yeah right but then you, you know that. many people would argue that you're continuing to convict these people after they've done their time yeah and that they're allowed to doing. and they're allowed to integrate back into society nah, listen, so nah, you know get a, beat it yeah I, I, beat it I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna tell you why i i want to go back to you know how we got to this point with you carolina sure but just america has too much freedom and I've been saying that. And what I mean by that is some people should not be allowed to think for themselves. And once you prove that you're not capable of thinking for yourself and you make wrong decisions, tag. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Put something on that motherfucker. Dark gun. What, what, yes. Like, yes. Wait, what, what inspires this? What, what is, uh, who, give me an example of who. Yeah, who's I mean, a, a, not, who deserves to be tagged? It's a, all right, it's a few people. I mean, people that are murderers, people mm-hmm. that are pedophiles, like just Okay, well, so Mike Tyson then you would think deserves to be tagged because he was convicted yes. of rape. Okay. See, here's my feeling. I feel when it comes to, you know, rape and pedophilia and that kind of shit, mm-hmm. we need to find out exactly what happened. Because there's cases, I saw that True Life MTV show okay. where this dude was fucking his girlfriend. He was 18. She and was she like was 17. Yeah. Exactly. Was, she wasn't it's, even 16. She no, was, that's right. Not, that's not, yeah, but, that's not the case. But, but they were in a relationship and because she's younger so, and in the state, he gets convicted and then he, forever he's spite. a... Oh, because he, he broke up with her, mm-hmm. and she was like, "If you break up with me, I'm gonna 
get a stats rape charge. There are many cases like that. And now we got to go fucking door to door. And that now that guy has that mark on his life for forever, life. forever. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't even think we got to go that extreme with rape and murder. Like in Jersey City, it was the. Uh, Guy who went into the Walgreens, beat up the security guard, took the security guard's gun, went and killed the cop. Rookie cop, only been on the force seven months. Oh. Then the police kills this guy. The guy's wife gets on TV and says, "I saw that. Yeah. He should have killed more cops." And if how I knew, is that okay? It, you know, why is she allowed to think for herself? Right, right, right. She needs to be tagged. <laughs> for me, we got to keep an eye on her. Like yes. some rights have to be taken away from people. And well, because if that's the way that she thinks. What else does she think is okay? Nah. Exactly. This yeah. is what we always talk about. Don't act off emotion. Act off. Uh, That's not acting logic. off emotion. Logic. That right. is logic. Logically, what Carolina just said is nah. a logical statement. Right. If you feel this way about this situation, what else do you think is but okay? But she thinks that she's being logical. Yes. Because in her I mind, I mean, absolutely. I think she's just. I think because she had a moment of logic after, like. She, she had a moment after she said it where she was like, um, you know, yes, I understand these police officers have families, but you have to understand, you know, I, I'm his family. But I'm why did his too. crazy ass go and shoot up exactly. at freaking Walgreens? Because she really needed that fucking plan B. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? She was, I want yes, that plan they B. Do. He was like, I don't have yeah. the money. He's like, well, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. Let's, let's, let, let's look at the whole community. The guy's brother and sister, they, they, they create this memorial for the right. dude in the hood. It that. says things like, thug in peace. <laughs> Real N words never die. Okay. Tag everybody. <laughs> Something ain't right about this, yo. This is okay to y'all? No. Like, we're, we're, we got a None memorial for the okay. murderer? None of that is okay. Thug in yeah. peace? No. Thug is the reason he's dead. In this same community, now the Bloods are saying uh-huh. they're going to wage war on the cops and kill the cops. Come on, okay. Come on, come on. Well, Why are where... you. The cops didn't do anything. Exactly. This crazy, your crazy homeboy killed a cop. He's in the wrong. It was cause and effect. Right. The reason both of those guys are dead is because of this guy that killed the cop. Exactly. And the cops killed him. Why are you mad at the cops? Again, we zero need to stop. logic. You know, but we're rewarding we're rewarding this thug mentality and it just needs to stop. It's like being a thug is still cool in certain communities. I think right. this is wearing down. When I was younger, yeah. thugging was this shit. Where yes, did it was. you grow up? I grew up in Manhattan, New York City. Okay, so you're yeah. a Manhattan boy. Manhattan okay. Boy. Mm-hmm. And thugging was cool. Thugging was the shit. We had Tupac and Juice. Right. Oh, was Bishop. Was, oh, Juice was shit. it. Yeah. Old Dog and Menace. Yeah. The whole uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop. They was thug. Thugging was the thugging shit, was dog. The, it was right. cool as fuck to thug. And, and you looked up to the dudes that thug. You know, the kid in school that was in a gang and shit. That was kind of, it was like, oh shit. You know, that in was In Ohio, exciting. we had Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. He's 99. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harmony. But you know, yeah, they're selling no, the album. I get it. They, they, they new album they're trying to sell for a million dollars. Stop it. Listen, LeBron went back to Cleveland the economy's up 500 million dollars everybody it. in Cleveland Go, losing their fucking mind yeah like, <laughs> he's, he's trying to, Bone Thugs is trying to sell an album, album for didn't million Wu-Tang dollars. do that didn't that, they yeah. Yeah. yeah okay so they're following yeah basically yeah Wu-Tang's going for the highest bidder Bone's like we'll just settle with a million <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland's got a hot streak Anybody right now a million? <laughs> gotta separate it between four of us so. <laughs> Cleveland's got a streak of luck we That's think we can settle with a million up to LeBron like yo we know you got it <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like you don't oh got that money. God. We know how much you got, buddy. Right. But back to thugging, yes. We used to celebrate thugging. Thugging was totally. the shit in the hood. But you know the bad part about that? Everybody that we looked at that was thugs, they were already established making money. <laughs> so, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Because we were looking up to people like Tupac and Juice. Who were making money. They were making money. Thugging. They weren't thugs. They was acting. Are you hey. kidding me? Tupac wasn't a thug. Get out of here. Tupac. Tupac was su- did hey. Pilates you know what? You're and ballet. Right. No, no, no. He was a thug. Tupac we was talked not about thug. it. Let's keep it like, let's be honest. He was a thug. People and you know what? Tupac, he went out like thugs go out. He absolutely did. Did you hear what the officer said were his last words when he Fuck went up to you. him? Yes. I said, go <laughs> Tupac. That is it. He didn't that say is that it. Shit. Oh, he totally did. He totally did. He totally did. I don't believe it. I want to believe it in my mind. This because- what he said. He's like, do you have a handkerchief? No. That's what he probably said, some soft ass shit. You know like why that. I don't believe that? It's been damn near 20 years. Do you have a years. Kleenex? Yeah. It's been- why did he not come out with this earlier? You only on that for 20 years, he- Tupac's he- last words. It's for the story. Shit. You really think he said, fuck you? No. I, do- I want to believe enough. it, you guys. I do, because Tupac is like everything, you know? It's you love be a- Tupac? Like love that? Tupac. Please. Oh my God. I used to like, remember the How Do You Want It video? I was like 14, I think, when that came out. I used to like pretend like I was a video girl. It was, that's. That's what I grew up with. Growing up. They did that because they want to put that in a biopic. 
What yes, the fuck that's you? what I'm saying. Famous yeah, last words. they paid words. that motherfucker. They paid some cop who's retired. Yo, I'll give you 20 Gs if you just say his dying words were fuck you. Fuck you. It was not fuck you. Oh, his but dying I... words were some shit like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what his dying uh-huh. Ow. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get my loafers. <laughs> Pac was, Pac was about it, though. No, he was. He was. He, I mean, honestly. He was about it, but he's just as about it as anybody faking to be about it. Mm-mm. Everybody I who's about I disagree it is with you. faking to be about it. It's not natural to be about it. But you know, you turn out to be what you pretend to be. That, yeah. Agreed. I, I will I fake it till you make it. That's it. And That's he it. faked it and faked it until he's making it. But what is the moral of the story? This is what this gets you. Let's say Pac is thugging. What does that lead to? The moral he's of the dead. St- yes. Dead? Yeah. Deadness. Yeah. But he's still a legend. Who gives a but fuck that's when what you're I'm, dead? But listen, what a lot of- I don't want to be a dead legend. <laughs> <laughs> gives a fuck. No, I do want to be a dead legend. Man, fuck. I don't want to get killed. I don't want to be a killed legend. Right. I don't want to be a murdered legend. It, it's hard to die of natural causes and be a dead legend. That is true. Who do you yeah. know that died of natural causes that is true. and is a dead legend? Who died of natural causes? Like, like fucking- I say that all the time. In order to get a movie, it has to be a- You got to die tragically. tragically. Right. Absolutely. Think about right. it. There's no story there if you, if you like passed away peacefully. Oh, TLC would have never got cares. a movie. <laughs> Then. If left eye didn't die in that car accident. <laughs> Seriously. Chili, be thanking that is Chili so put wrong. the fucking wood in the road. A- <laughs> Listen, God <laughs> bless Aaliyah. <laughs> he goes, yo, we need to kill this bitch. She was like, rent, rent the Jeep. Rent, rent the Jeep. The <laughs> God bless Aaliyah. But I don't oh. know if she gets a movie without that plane crash, That one dog. breaks my heart, though. Oh. She Whitney- was... I loved Aaliyah. Aaliyah was... Come on, man. A game changer. Game changer. Loved her. And she was classy. Classy. You know what I mean? Like, she was doing movies and doing all of these side projects yes. before anybody else thought. Yes. about it. I really admired her. Whitney's getting a movie. Look yeah. how she died. Yep. Biggie got a movie. Pac got a movie. You gotta die tragically Absolutely. in order to get a movie. Yeah. It's not happening no other Take way. Take that to school, kids. That's I can't. It. What the fuck is, uh, this is so embarrassing that I don't know. Uh, what? Uh, Madiba. How do I only know his... Who the hell is Madiba? Uh, Madiba. Uh, how do I only know his his fucking name that they call him within the... Uh, you know, his his people call him the president of South Africa. Mandela? Uh, Mandela. Oh, you should be ashamed Madiba? of your fucking I self. Mean, well, you guys, that's what they actually I thought called you were trying to say Madiba. That was his, like, because that was a term of affection. No, no, but because that's what he, the, the people in his uh, whatever call him that. Right, right. Yeah, Madiba. What are you yeah, about yeah. to say? Because he has six movies. So here's the thing. And they <laughs> flopped. I don't care. He still had six he movies. He died of natural causes, and they couldn't even sell his movie because it fl- if he got killed... That Different movie story. would have been a box office Absolutely. smash. Absolutely. I don't know. But nobody watched that Absolutely. latest biopic. If he was assassinated, I mean, which, God forbid, you never want to wish milk. that on anyone. Yeah. But milk. Like, the guy milk. milk. I don't know who the fuck Milk is. But now you Are you trying to say MLK or is it really a Milk person? No, Milk. milk Harvey the Milk. the gay dude that got shot yes. up in San Francisco. In San Francisco. Sean Penn played him. Oh, yeah, movie. I remember the movie. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. He was uh, the fucking board of directors for, for not even, he was barely in politics. <laughs> He wasn't even a fucking president no, of a country. No, he wasn't like a governor or he like, you know. He was the district no. attorney general for a fuck for some shit. I don't know. I, I can go lower than that. Oscar Grant. Who that? Who's that? The guy in Oakland who the police put face down and shot in the back. He had a movie. Oh, was that Fruitville, Fruitville Station? Station? Yes, oh, Fruitville yes, yes. Station. That okay. was based wow. off a true story. Perfect yeah. example. If you get shot. Listen, oh, matter of yeah. fact, being killed. You don't even got to be a star. Listen, if you don't want to achieve shit in life, just get killed. That's it. <laughs> and have a good life insurance policy for your family. Just exactly. be like, Mom, I did this for you. There you exactly. go. You know how fucking great you got to be to die of natural causes and people give a fuck? Yeah. Think I'm about, trying to think I'm, about I'm Gandhi. Think about anyone. Gandhi yeah, got killed. Gandhi, maybe Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Is she still around? No, she died. She didn't get no movie. No, she didn't get a movie. You're right. How did Ray die? I forgot. Ray who? Charles? The, yeah. He's still alive, ain't he? No. No. I don't know about No, that. Ray Charles, is he alive? Let me Google. Oh, no, he might be That's alive. the thing about black people. You got to check sometime. I no, don't know. This thing, we don't know if you died unless you got killed. Wait, Ray Charles. That is the on. truth right here. If you didn't get killed, we don't know you died. That is very true. You just true. go out into existence. You just like slowly no, fade I, I'm, away. I'm pretty sure Ray Charles is dead. I feel but like But the he fact that have... we don't know concretely yeah. <laughs> is some crazy it's like the fact cause that, for concern. The fact very that we Because he is... One of the groundbreaking artists, I mean, of all time. Of I mean, all really, time. No, Ray the, Charles. The fact that we don't know concretely is because this is the Brilliant Idiot Show. And That's there's not true. too much we know concretely. Yo, you're absolutely Carolina, right. you're yes. supposed to know. Yeah, I, this you is know what? I can't believe- you be on The View and I'm you don't know these brain, people <laughs> I'm having a total brain fart <laughs> right now. I thought we were cloudy. talking about me Trust right me, now. The only, person like, that, the only person that would know Ray Charles in The View is Whoopi Goldberg. Nobody else would have Why? Because she's black. Now, Ray Charles died June 10th, 2004. See, that's why 2004, I was like working the clubs in Miami. You know, I mean, I was not 
I wasn't all there. That's not an excuse. I know. It's horrible. I know. I tried. No, I really but it's tried okay. Listen, I, but I'm fine because we can't yeah. say it either. But that is the reality. If you yeah. don't die tragically. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. James Brown yeah. died of natural causes. We'll see James how his Brown, movie James Brown died of having a heart fucked up from uh, all He the has a movie coming coke. out. Yeah, it's called Get On Up. That movie is going to be amazing. I hope so. That it's got to be for better than Ray. Sake. Amazing. For his sake. Listen, I grew up on James Brown. My father was a James Brown fanatic. Really? Plus James Brown is from South Carolina. He is in love with James That's Brown. That's your people. That Yes. Yeah. My father went to James Brown's funeral. And walked up on stage with Al Sharpton them like he belonged there. <laughs> it was, it he did the little mo. Yes, <laughs> he little mo did. Yes, remember when little mo did the <laughs> little, little, little mama, little mama, little mama. Little mama. Yes, yes, yes. That yes. Is great. he was there, cooling, wow. kicking it like he belonged, and nobody said anything to him. And wouldn't let people get near the casket. Back, 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 back up, back up. <laughs> yeah, because That's, you know what? Because he did it with authority. With authority. Yeah, because yeah. he did it like he was supposed to be there. Yes. You know? Like, that's what you can get away with so much stuff if you do that. He felt it, man. Okay, now you're in Miami. Oh, my Carolina God. Are we Bermudez. back to me? Yes, we're no, back to we're you. Back to you. Okay. We're back to you. But before we get back to you, I just want to say that um, I'm cleanly shaven, man. You really do. It's smooth as a baby's it's, butt. It's smooth. And yeah. you know why it's because smooth? because of this trophy? I think it's because of that yeah. beautiful trophy that you're holding right there. You know, Bevel, Bevel uh, you know, Shave Club, man. Or no, Bevel, getbevel.com. Yes. It's you a know. sexy razor, honestly. It's, it's if a you good see that looking in a man's razor. house, Hell what are yeah. you going to think? Yeah, with that beaver bristle thing, that's nice. Now, this is sexy. I would, hand this to like... a, I would hand this to a girl to shave her pubic hairs. <laughs> wow. And that that's like a wax. You yes. know what I mean? That is a beautiful situation <laughs> yeah. right there. If yep. you if you see a girl shaving with that, you she you know least, she's got quality. She's a quality check. She got good vagina. Absolutely, dude. absolutely. Yeah. And probably health insurance. That's a full metal razor right there. Give them the code. Okay, the code is idiots. You get twenty percent off your first month at getbevel dot com. Uh, that's getbevel dot com. And uh, yeah, if you want to have your matter of fact, there's girls that listen to this. Where? Get it for your man. You know what's coarse? You know what's curly? And you know what skin is sensitive? <laughs> Pussy. Pussy, yeah. Very <laughs> pussy. I think you need to get that bevel down under and then send some pictures to Brilliant Idiots and show us what that shaved up vagina looks like. Pick it up. <laughs> All right. Now, now, so you're in... So I'm in Miami. Miami with the Baker Boys. I'm with the Baker the legendary Boys. Legendary Baker Boys. And I am illegally interning for them because I'm not in college anymore. Okay. I'm not receiving college credit. Oh. So I'm like sneaking in the door. I have to call them before I come in. Long story short. Hold on. How do you stay in Miami though? You did your two weeks. Did you ever go back home to pack up some clothes and no, come back? No, because my parents had a house in Miami and they let me stay there. Wow. So yeah. Beautiful. I love so it. So I'm living rent free. I'm just kind of like doing my thing. And so... um. Somebody finds out that I'm an illegal intern. So they put my picture up. I'm like the first person who was blackballed from Clear Channel South Florida. And they said, do not <laughs> allow this young woman into the building because I was they not getting. You. Yeah, exactly. You I got, got tagged. There you go. Tag <laughs> I got tagged out. for the first time. <laughs> so um, so I was like super depressed. I was like, They did what no man in Hollywood could. That's right. Tagged you tell them. Ass. That's it. <laughs> Tag it. Um, so yeah. So anyway, um, I was going to. Uh, I was going to have to go back home to Ohio. And then um, there was this contest. It was called Wild on Why. And they were looking for a club girl to do the club gigs Friday and Saturday nights. Okay. And so my, my homeboy, J-Love, told me, he was like, this is your job. He's like, go for it. And it's all like based on, you know, audience response. And, and I didn't know anyone in Miami. So I'm like going up against these girls that were like from Hialeah. And they have like all their homegirls. And like, you know, they're, like, they're bringing out their families and everything. And I was Jungas. just like, off dolphins. they're not chongas. Uh -huh. They sucked off dolphins and he hey, played. Everything, everything. Yeah. And so. Um, I didn't know you were talking about football. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn, you sucked a dolphin? Dude? That is, that is, you want that, that is job. That's so wrong. That's how you get into no. the aquarium no you just shook that dolphin yeah, and i hey, love i love the flipper. sound that he makes <laughs> 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 so anyway um i end up winning this contest and i i won my first contract with, with in who? radio w with clear channel South so it wasn't Florida. with the bigger boys it wasn't with the bigger boys this was on y100 okay and what exactly were you doing Friday and Saturday nights, I would go to Cafe Iguana okay. and do the live broadcast from like 11 to 1 in the morning and party my face off and then go down to South Beach and hang out with Mr. Mauricio, my other boy. Like, I just, I really, really enjoyed that that time of my life because I found out a lot about myself, professionally, personally. Um, it was a really great moment for me. And when so, did you get your first on-air shift? So then I told my my program director, I was like, look, I can do so much more than this. Like, you know, can I do an entertainment report and contribute to this guy, Michael Yo show? Huge. I didn't just take what they gave me. That is huge advice for anybody. Yeah. Ask. People are so afraid to Absolutely. ask for more. Ask, the only Absolutely. thing that you can hear is no. Absolutely. 
That's it. And they'll no. admire that you ask for more because they'll be like, okay, this person's ambitious. They want to get ahead. Ask, right? Is that not? so true. And because I asked and then I got the entertainment report on Michael Yo's show, they were looking for a girl for the morning show. And Who was the morning show at the time? Uh, Kenny and Footy. Okay. And Froggy was also there. And um, and so they were like, you know, we're going to switch you over to mornings. They need a female presence. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't do mornings. And they're like, no, you're, you're going to do it. I had no idea at that point. You know, this, when you're young and naive, you just don't get it. Yeah. And then um, I moved into the morning shift and it um, ended up working out really well. And a year later, I got an email from Z100 saying they were looking for, um, they were shifting things and that they were looking for another female talent. And would I meet with this man named Elvis Duran? Boom. First thing I did was call Eric and I was like, have you ever heard of a radio station called Z100? Yeah. And he was like, are you kidding me? Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. And um, and he said, he was like, you need to get on that flight. He's like, and you need to go impress the shit out of that guy. So, How long did this process take from you being with the Baker Boys to you ending up with Froggy and Footy Them? How long was that process? About two years. Two a years. A year and a half to two years. That's why I always tell people, appreciate the process. There's no such thing as a good or bad experience. Right. It's just all part of the process. Absolutely. That's it. And it was more than I could have ever imagined it would be, you know? And so- um, You fly I'm, to New York. Fly to New York, and I'm like waiting to meet this guy. I'm, I have no idea what I'm about to get myself into. I meet Elvis. We go out to dinner. Dinner was supposed to be an hour, and it ended up being three hours. And we walked around New York and got gelato that night. And I, I got a job, you know. So, so he was, hired you on the spot. He hired no, not on the spot. Um, he hired me shortly after that, after we met. So, so this whole okay. So you've been was it two years in radio all together, or with much. the Baker Boys internship? It was all two years. I would I would count that as yeah. So it yeah. took you from it took you two years from your start of your radio career to get with Elvis. Yeah. And then you were with Elvis for. I was with Elvis for almost eight years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and we grew a lot. We grew a lot. When I came to Z100, it was just a, a show that was here in New York, and you know, a very well respected show, loved. Um, and uh, we started talking about the possibilities of syndication, mm -hmm. and the first station that we were going to take over was Y100 in Miami, in where Miami. I came wow. from. Yeah. And then y'all eventually the thing, replaced the Baker Boys. No, no, the Baker Boys were on 103.5, okay. the beat, which is what you're on now. Yeah. Um, uh, we replaced Kenny and Footy on Y100. Well, let me tell you something. One of the good things about um, coming up in Miami and something that I always remind people is that there wasn't a gas station I didn't go to to promote the show. Mm -hmm. I went to every car lot. I mean, Publix, anywhere I could go to get our name out there, I did it. And so when I went back to Miami, there was a huge response because people... They saw me come yeah, up, you know, you and so wow. it's like never be afraid to like, you know, people think they're too good now. You know, there's like the sense of entitlement that oh, I see yes. with a lot of like younger kids. And, you know, I always tell them, like, take every opportunity that you can to, to promote yourself and to promote whatever it is that you're a part of, because it's going to help you in the long run. You know, so um, all those interns are like that. Now, I hate these little entitled millennials. It's really, it, you know what it is? It's not that I hate them. It disturbs me. It disturbs me. It really does. You, they don't understand the process. Well, and you don't appreciate things if you don't go through each phase. You yeah. know what I'm yes. saying? Like if you, if you go from start to start to stardom, you're never going to appreciate the grind. You know what I mean? Like, man, I remember when I used to go home and I would go straight to the to the morning show. Yes. And, you know, you, you remember all of those stories and that's a part of, of you know, you're evolving as a talent. You Do you know? remember the term built to last? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is that? You didn't Ford know, trucks? What yeah, is it? Yeah. yeah. But we didn't know if we were built to last if we didn't go through that. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can happen to any of us right now in our careers that we know we can't get through. Right. Because we've been through the fire already. Absolutely. Yeah. These interns aren't built to last. Well, I always love when people say, yeah, I'm going to be on air. Okay, well, what are you doing to be on air? You know what I mean? Like, are you um, doing your own podcast? Are you Have you worked observing? in the promotions department? Exactly. Do you know every yeah. facet of the industry that are you're you about to get involved in? Are you fucking the on-air talent? Are you... Bl no, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, definitely. That's like something that, that these interns don't do anymore. Am I wrong? <laughs> Charlamagne. I mean, now listen. <laughs> these these interns were fucking no. you back in the day. Listen, and they now really? they're not fucking when you. When I was working with Wendy Williams. Stop. Now, mind you, when I was with Wendy, I got with Wendy in 2005, so I was about 25. The interns were maybe 21, so we were close yeah. in age. I fucked a few interns, but I didn't promise them anything. But that now is they're so entitled. wrong. I didn't that know. is so wrong. No, no, this is some bullshit. Now they think they can just come in, get coffees, and that's how they're gonna 
That's go typically on air. how you do it. No, you suck some dick. <laughs> That's how you get on fucking air. And, and if it means anything, I'm still fucking a couple of them now. Thank you. Years later. You, I, I, if it means anything. You know what I mean? We've grown know. together. Yeah, they're still yeah. interns. <laughs> Ten years later, they're still okay. interning. Okay. You know what I mean? I said milk You'll make and it one sugar. Day. You'll make and it. And sugar. Okay? <laughs> you know what I tell every intern? I told one today because she came in there and she was like, I don't know what she think we called her in there for, but I'll be like, sit right here. So she's all in front of the mic, right? Yeah, she she's ready to, to talk. go. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> Position all in front of the mic. Green light. And I'm like, I need you to print this stuff out, whatever, whatever. She was like, oh, I'm not going to talk. I said, talk? What you mean talk? You earned oh, I, that. I, I thought you wanted me on air. For what? Like, put the fucking weed in the bag first. That's what I tell put every intern. In the put bag. the weed in the bag first. You remember on Belly when the little young kids was telling DMX them like, "Yo, I want to get money with y'all, yo. I want to get money with y'all." And DMX was like, put the weed "Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Bag. Put the weed in the fucking bag first. <laughs> put the weed in the bag. You're not ready to hit the block and start making money. It's like, true. sit your ass Crawl down. Before you walk, man. But it's they're true. so entitled, and they automatically think they can do whatever it is we're doing better than us. Why? Absolutely. Why are they entitled? Because their parents didn't teach them. Uh, honestly, what I did think our that, parents teach us that they didn't teach? Like, how is parenting? I think changed? our parents let us fail. Mm. I think our parents let us do things where you know you were challenged and you maybe weren't the greatest at it. I think mm. our parents were realistic with us and didn't tell us that we could do everything that we wanted to do. I mean, mm. I think that honestly, I feel like being a little bit insecure is a great thing for this industry. It makes you work harder. Everybody in this work- industry is insecure. Exactly. You don't get in entertainment unless you're insecure. Because you you want that attention. You, want you love. crave yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. But I just think that a lot of these kids, their parents always told them they were the best, that nobody's better than them, that you know, they can do everything that they want to do. And so then they come into this work situation, they realize, well, why am I not where Charlemagne is? Well, you're not there because you didn't grind. You didn't do what yeah. you needed to do to get there. Yeah. So To be me now, you had to be me then. Exactly. You had to do 16 but years in radio. Like, you had to be an intern, be right. in promotions. And put in your 10,000 hours. Get fired four times. <laughs> you got to do that. Well, yeah. exactly. And even me going now through this transition, you know, I left radio. I left an extremely successful show. And, you, you know. You left Elvis Duran because you went to TV. I did. I left um, Elvis's show because I went to TV. And, you know, that brought on its own set of challenges. You know what I mean? But it's like now nobody can tell me that. I can't do it. You know, that was like the one thing that I said, I want to see if I can actually do this. And now I can. Now I have a completely different skill set, you know? Now so tell them what you did, though. You left, uh, which was a great last show, by the way. Your oh, last show on couch? Elvis. No, no. Her last show on Elvis yeah. was amazing. Was it, it was super Oh, my emotional. God. It was so riveting. They, did a, they did a fantastic what, what job. It? What happened in it? They just, you know, they you pulled. You got great feet. Oh, my God. Are you looking at my feet right now? The I'm so whole embarrassed show I've been I looking need, at her feet. I need a pedicure, and I'm no, so mortified right now. whole show. You've been Thank killing you. it. Thank you. Okay, great toes. good. Thanks. Good. Um, so you have polish on the on the last toe? Yes, of course. Right. They look yeah. a little ashy. I don't know if it's I, I need to get a pedicure. Is, no, this is like a week oh, and a half. Don't so. let him tell you that your feet don't look. Yeah, nice. look at you telling me. I've that seen I'm Carolina's ashy. feet when they're amazing. Those well, aren't amazing. I think they okay, look amazing let's, let's right go. there. Why are you guys zooming in? Get the foot <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare. Okay. Yeah, so um, great last show. It was, it was tears. Great and, last and, show. And that's when you know you're good at what you do because in radio they don't let you get a last show. They no. don't. Hell no. They don't get the such fuck an out. Honor. You got to be a it certain was. type of personality, a certain type of good at what you do for them to let you get a last show. I give them a lot of credit. I give Elvis a ton of credit. I give Josh. Kalodney, who is the imaging guy, they put a lot of like really great stuff together. Of like, you have almost eight years of audio, and for them to pick out a lot of the better moments for me, it was just like it's your swan song, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went on to do um, the couch, which was a live uh, local morning show here in New York City, which for me it was a tremendous you know opportunity because how many people get to go for their first anchoring job in New York City? And let's be clear, local in New York means 106 and Park everywhere else. Is it exactly? It's a big deal. Wait, 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 local. What does that mean? A local morning show in New York means national everywhere else. That's a big deal. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, it was it was a huge thing for me. You know, I know a lot of people question whether or not I should have left. And, well, you know. Well, you no, got to keep on moving. Exactly. And I just said, yeah. I want to evolve as a talent. You know, oh, I'll yeah. never be able to say, oh, I can do TV unless I'm in it. You know, I, I never wanted people to look at me and say, oh, you're just a radio chick trying to do TV. No, I, I put in my, my time. Your time, and you did. Let me ask you this. You wear sandals a lot? I do. <laughs> I'm just saying, you got I'm good. So, you got good sandals feet. You know what I mean. She's married, so, and you have a girlfriend. I got a girlfriend. Stop I can't looking at her girlfriend. feet. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why are we? You have a girlfriend? For years, I've had a girlfriend. No way. A Spanish so girlfriend. What, what kind? She's half black. What is she's half black, Spanish. half Hispanic. <laughs> she's not half Spanish. She's half she's white. She's half, half black. black. Okay. Yeah. Nice so, Jewish kid. Three years. Half black, known half her for three girl. years, and all so, of a sudden she's Spanish. Where the fuck have you been? She's not Spanish. No. When are you getting married? Huh? 
When are you going to get married? I honestly. Um, Who's the commitment phobe? You or her? No, no commitment phobe. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, Do you guys live together? We live together. Do you have a pet together? We don't have a pet together. That's the next but step. But, you know, I'm going to marry this woman. That's not a question. Aww. right? No, no, I love her. She's That's amazing. So I'm very lucky. Very Aww. lucky. And she got great feet. I was going to say. She, got <laughs> gr- she has great, really nice feet. I'm a big fan of her What's her, her foot game? Her foot game, like, <laughs> you're talking about sneakers or like, what do... No, I'm just messing with oh, you. Oh, oh, no, I'm serious about really? feet. Yeah, she. all the toes have it there. They start, you know, They're the like biggest toe. They're symmetrical? Yes, and they slant down. Oh, She got perfect. a nice Oh, that means she has Egyptian uh, ancestry. Ancestry, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like her yeah. fourth toe isn't larger than the big toe. I that's don't like, like the fucking- That's cl- really- the, the raptor claw yeah. second toe. Yeah. Talon. The yeah. talon, yes. yes. And yeah. it's a nice slope, and they're beautiful. Nice feet. I can appreciate a foot. A oh, foot is that's, that's what makes us different than apes, guys. Yes, exactly. You got to appreciate a foot. <laughs> if we had the hands down there, then fuck it. You know what I mean? This is craziness. You, you know what? I never asked you about the couch. What's that? It was this one time. Okay. Genuine was on the fucking couch. Yes. And it went viral. Yes. Was he really on drugs? I don't think he was. I think he was super tired. Okay. And I think he came in, because they came in straight from another show. Yeah. And his flight was delayed or something like that. He told us he drank a five-hour energy drink. That's why I had him blinking so crazy. Yeah. I I think he was, have you ever been to the point where you're almost delirious that you're so tired? I think it was that. I think, honestly, because I would tell you, I would call somebody out if they were on drugs. But um, no, I don't think that he was under the influence of anything. But you, you was with, on the couch for two years. On the couch for two years, and then um, unfortunately it got canceled. Mm-hmm. Which is and the nature of business. It, it happens. Is. And Listen, it happens to the best of us. Why you got canceled before? <laughs> yeah, of course. But I you got go canceled. through. You, but do, did you not question yourself? I mean, this is something that a lot of people are afraid no. to say. I was happy. Were you really? I'm very. I was happy. I didn't like the show. So what shows got canceled? The hookup. The hookup got canceled. Yeah. What? Don't say you didn't like the show. I didn't like it. That's well. Okay. What show was I didn't it? like, but you know, it, it was a dating. I don't show want MTV okay. to be like, well, why well, give him another one since he didn't like the first one? They, I mean, look, they, <laughs> they know, they know I did, I did a great job on it. Yeah, you can't question how hard. Nobody there could question how hard I worked on it. Well, mm-hmm. see, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. Like nobody can take that away from me. This, I know I went in every grind. day. I know I killed it. Yeah. I know I brought like everything to the table. And so now, now it's just what's next. It was a great. You know? It was great practice. Gave you a great reel. That's great. Right. It's a great, great opportunity. Reel. Like this is the way I looked at it. It was a great opportunity. It was a lot of. It, mm-hmm. it was a lot of uh, you know fun to do and an amazing eye opening experience. Right. Is it my ideal show? No. Right. But I'm sure there's a lot of actors that do a movie. It's not their idea. Like when Lawrence Fishburne was on fucking Pee Wee's Playhouse, I don't think he was like, listen, this is what I want to do with my it. career. Pee-wee's Playhouse well, what about David Letterman? David Letterman did this like BS little morning show and they told him he was going to be a failure. And then now look at him. He's exactly. like the king of late night television. I've heard that that's, twice in my but life. But no, that's another point. That what? is another point. You don't, you got to do certain things that you don't want, maybe Go don't want to do. Zone. Get out of your comfort zone and do it to the best of your ability. And I didn't. I thought I maintained me. I thought I was right. I was proud of, you know, my performance and that sure. kind of stuff like that. So I felt good about it. Right. It's just, it's just like being in the gym. If you're constantly doing the same workout, the same routine, your muscles aren't going to react anymore. Interesting. It's pointless. Yeah. So sometimes you have to do things that make Switch you uncomfortable. Up. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Some things that bring a little pain, like some things you normally wouldn't do. That's why I never tell somebody what I wouldn't do because guess what? I'm not even capable. I don't even know what I'm capable of doing well, until I don't somebody know what brings something I new to do. me. I don't know what I wouldn't do Ex- until exactly. I'm in the situation. Exactly. You know what I mean? So you got to put yourself out there. Put and yourself out there. Really Let give it, be it a shot. Scary. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes other people see things in you that you don't see in yourself. And they're like, you know what, Charlamagne, you'd be really good for this. And you'd be like, yeah, really? We talked about a late night show for you. I, I told you from the very beginning when I met you, I was like, you would be so amazing at late night. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely want to do late night. But some, no, they came to me with the idea for daytime, too. Really? So that's something that they put in my head. And I'm like, daytime? Yeah. And they're like, no, Charlamagne, of course you can't. Well, you were fantastic on the stuff. Bethany show that we, you know, we both did Bethany yeah. several times before was cool. it was canceled, you know, but it's like, it's a whole different set of like, you know, challenges and exactly. And yeah. so you never know until you're in the situation. You got it. And, it, and it's hard, but trusting producers. Hell yeah. Is, is hard because you, you know, have to, but when you can really have faith in yes. producers, it's, it makes a world of difference. They're like coaches. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, it's literally Phil Jackson going, listen. Just do this triangle offense. Yep. Yes. But if you don't trust me, it won't work. Yeah. If you do trust me, yes. you're going to win some championships. Yes. Right. But do it in your own way. 
It, he's not going to put you in a position he doesn't think you can win because yep. that reflects him badly. I, I, need, I need a good coach. I'll tell every person in radio that. I tell people in television that I love good coaches. I love coaches that maximize the most out of their talent. I don't care how much raw skill you have. I don't care how good you think you are. In order to be great, you need a good coach. Well, Absolutely. and that you're coachable because some people can't take constructive criticism. That's I true. mean, there have been moments where I have like totally flopped and I needed that person to tell me, here's where you went wrong. Mm -hmm. And you take that and you learn from it and you're like, you know what? Never again. You know, like, so you really build on that. But let's talk about something else that I kind of wanted to touch on. I don't know how much time we have here. We're good. Oh, are we? Yeah. Well, here's something that I thought of. We both went to the Beyonce and Jay-Z show. Absolutely. The on the and I on the run tour and I said to my husband who was I there, did not go by yes, the way you were excluded I was not from the party to the Beyonce well he was in the store. suite I was down in like section 140 you know so um, I didn't know he was there I know I you should have texted me I know um, thanks <laughs> piece of shit oh, man. so anyway my husband and I were driving home that night and I said to him I said you know what I said there's something to be said about Beyonce mm -hmm. okay and just what a performer she is. And what if this girl's parents would have said, you know what, honey, it's great. You, you have a good voice, but why don't you do something sensible? Like, you know, go into business yeah. or something. The fact that she had parents who were so ride or die for her that they literally did everything to make this woman into what she is today. Yeah, yeah. That says a lot. Well, listen, so to me, they knew she was going to be a star from the beginning. Who the hell named their child Beyonce? <laughs> what, like, seriously, what is that? No, there are no other. I've it's never. Scream star. You never heard that name ever. Yeah, totally. You can't look it up in no language, no nothing. Beyonce, where, where did that come from? Where do you come up with the name Beyonce? Right. And it just flows. It rolls off the tongue. Yes. It's like, yeah. Yep. Solange, yeah. they didn't put that much thought in. No, Solange, they Solange oh, Sol poor basement. Solange baby. is a She's good like, name, too. Oh. Basement. <laughs> She's like, basement. <laughs> Solange, on D -listed? do not say Solange is a good name. No, he's saying Come Solange, on. they gave up. They, yeah, they, they just they like threw it, they were over. threw it out there. They didn't put the same thought as they did in the Beyonce. No, Beyonce, Beyonce is, is everything. Beautiful, you know? Exactly. It's just effer effervescent. It encompasses it's, all of uh, what she is. You, you want to just move your hands when you say it. You want to just stroke her feet when yes. you say it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she makes me feel like I have she long, has, flowing she, hair. Beyonce. Now, now this but guy. Solange, what does Solange sound like? Right. Solange to me sounds like. Like a girl who fights her brother in law in the elevator. Yeah, she sounds yeah. like the girl that fights after the after yeah. something like the Met Ball in the elevator. Salon, <laughs> right, right. Salange. Yeah. No, it's just there's too much ja. You know what I mean? It's salon. It's too. It's too harsh. It gets a little. It gets a little harsh at the end. Salange. Yeah, but I think that they were going for the French influence, perhaps. Salon. Yeah, they should have not. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they should have just kept that shit Americana. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, um, Houston. So like, keep it Houston. Keep it Is that H -town. where they're from? Houston. Yeah, yeah, Houston. Born and raised. Tell you something. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. I don't get it. You I don't get, get the love for Beyonce. Oh, You're kidding up. me. No, are, you, are you just he's saying trolling. that? I'm not trolling. He's trolling. Are you just, I'm you not can't. trolling. He's trolling, There's, Carolina. I'm not trolling. There, you Let cannot me tell you deny. Something. The first time I thought, the first time I was like blown away by Beyonce was when she did the Super Bowl performance. That's probably the first time you've ever seen her perform, because that's normal Beyonce. Well, yeah, I don't, that's I don't regular. watch Beyonce perform, but I've seen and that's, music that videos. That was abbreviated Beyonce, by the yes, way. because that's like, Beyonce in her sleep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So her whole thing is performance. And singing ability. She can sing her ass oh, off. Oh, totally. No. I, I don't know if it was the Grammys or the Oscars. Which one? She sang. She had on that long white dress. No dancing, no nothing. And she sang. I don't remember. I don't know if she was singing a song from, what was the song? What was the movie she was in with Jennifer Hudson? I don't remember. Oh, Dream Girls? Yeah, I don't know if she was singing a song from Dream Girls. I don't remember what it was. But she sang so crazy and so beautiful. And then she held her hand out and a dove flew right on her <laughs> hand. It was perfect. That dove was tagged. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, this is a good point you bring up. Because there's this guy named Jeff Rosenthal. Okay. He wrote an article. The name, the, the article was on Vice.com this week. It was Beyonce's. Beyonce and Jay-Z's On The Run tour is so good, it's bad. Yep. And I, the other headline was coming to terms with their <laughs> flawless show. And he used terms in the article like, their show is excruciatingly perfect. And he said, it's so good that it looks like it was edited and produced it beforehand. Was. And, it was. And he was basically saying, like, there's no room for error, which makes this show boring. I'm like, are we really in an era where we're giving people flack for being great. We accept mediocrity so much that we give people flack for being actually good. I don't I don't see what he said as that. I see what he said as the same reason why people are drawn to you. 
which is I don't know what he's going to say. And with Jay-Z and Beyonce's show, if you expect perfection and nothing less, it removes that shadow of a doubt like, oh shit, a fucking, what's that white pink could fall from this rope shit she's hanging from. Mm Mm-hmm. That oh, element shit. of surprise. The element of surprise and the element of I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. The unknown is what keeps us interested. No. If I know it's going to be okay, You're on it, it becomes boring. You're dude. on it. And here's why. Because honest. everything was so calculated. Mm-hmm. It, it lost a bit of its authenticity. And I feel like even the mm-hmm. giggle that she had at the end of Drunken Love or whatever it was when she was when Beyonce came. Ca- it was like almost, it was too perfect. Too you know? She laughs in the song that no. plays on the radio every day. It's giggling and drunk and But love. it's just like, but, but you're on stage with your with your man in, in New York City where he's from. And this is a moment, or actually it was MetLife, but whatever, uh-huh. same same crap. So it's like, but this is like a moment where you two can like slide, own Carolina. it. Sorry. Are you from Jersey? No. Okay. Uh, no, you're from Manhattan. Um, so no, the whole point is just that like you want to see those off the cuff moments. Not everything that's so produced and so timely out and so like let me just, tell you two young what goes something. viral sorry go, Listen, go. exactly go, no say it because you're about to prove my point say it what goes viral the, the girl twerking the no the girl <laughs> not the girl twerking the, the girl, girl falling falling and setting on yeah, fire yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. that's what and goes this, viral and this proves my point yeah, yeah we live in such a fucked up era that we go to see what's wrong instead of what's right Instead of going to see a great show where two of the best performers the world has ever seen put on a great show we're like yeah, but they didn't fall though. That's but not what not we were about looking for. Matthew wasn't That's in the crowd what... with his baby mamas. Matthew knows. I'm not... Solange didn't come out and beat up on Jay Z. Y'all worried about all the wrong shit. No, that's yes, not it. That's not it. I want to connect. If I'm there, and this is a because I'm a fan, by the way. I think there's a difference between mm-hmm. me saying this and a hater because a lot of haters are looking for things that objective. are wrong. Yeah. I, who hates? I don't think you can hate Beyonce. There's nothing to hate. Oh, there are plenty of people who do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But what is there to hate? I, that I she's just... so perfect. That is the stupidest that's thing going on. A lot of people thing. say that. It's the dumbest shit. But that's, but that's okay, what people Okay, whatever. Feel. Then they're a fucking hater. Exactly. Uh, but I think there is something. It's not that we're looking for what's wrong. Is we like we like the unknown, man. I want to be surprised. I want to be. I want to see a moment where like, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen, and then it ended up being this beautiful thing. But then if you went the night before and your friends went, and you or if your friends went the night before and you went the next night. There's nothing that you can tell them that happened at your show that didn't happen at their show. And that's a pro- And that's Dude, the problem. Th- I perform every night. I'm a stand-up comedian. Right. Every single night I perform. And I see people performing all the time. The things that people remember, obviously amazing jokes and stuff like that are incredible. But that raw live moment where something happens in the mm-hmm. crowd, that's what you take home. Sure. You know what I mean? These these things that just happen to happen, you're like, oh my God, is this happening for me? Well, let me ask you a question, because we're all performers in our own, right? Yeah. How do we know Beyonce and Jay-Z aren't fucking up on stage? But they're so good at what they do, no. they you make it, it look effortless. No, you How? Sense it. You know, I promise there's you something in the it. eyes where they're like, ah, you know? Like, it's there's, human connection, yeah. yo. Human yep. connection is so real. It's it's the difference between, it's like why Kanye's rants became contrived. You know, at first, it was like, oh wow, shit. He's, he's opening up. He's open. What the yeah. fuck is going on? And then he kept doing it. And it's like, is he planning no, this No, 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 shit? no. It wasn't that he was planning it. After a while, it was like, Dog, Here shut the again. fuck up. Oh, yeah. It's redundant. How many times yeah. you like, bitch? All right, Enough. bro. Okay, fucking okay. Shut up. fine. Initially, Vuitton. we're like, wait, is this happening on fucking TV? Am I watching this shit? What the fuck? Is, is this happening it's on engaging. radio? engaging. Is he cursing? Did he just fucking curse out Charlotte? You what guys the fu- are into this. This viral era has ruined you. No. It's not about it being it's bad. It's ruined you. Charlamagne, it's not about it being bad. It's about some shit is different. We like the wrinkles in the fabric. Right. We, it's the same reason why when you when we first saw a chick with a big ass and that was the first big ass, J-Lo, it's the J-Lo effect. A J-Lo had something that was different and beautiful. She had a big ass. And was the first to come out and display and it. it. And I'm, a and ho, ho, ho. I'm from the hood. I've been seeing big asses all But not in Hollywood. In Hollywood. I've been seeing big asses, but that was a different appreciate. Like, her ass was crazy. Her ass went viral. It was a good thing, not a bad thing. But it was a wrinkle in the fabric. We were like, yo. Something different. What the fuck? Except this yep. is some different. A Spanish girl with a fat ass is different. Dog. You're from when New you're York. Looking, so. When you're looking at freaking Reese Witherspoon all day long that yeah. has like, you know, I mean, come on. Then there's a there's a distinct difference you there. Know, the fattest I, ass that we had seen before that was Phil Jackson's. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Phil Jackson's fat ass. And then we saw J-Lo. We're like, shit, I'd rather be behind that than Game Phil. on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else bothered me about this guy's article? I'd like article? to be in that triangle. <laughs> you know what else bothered me about this guy's article? <laughs> 
That's so wrong. In this guy's article, he goes, um, the best part of the show was the end. When they show the home videos of Jay-Z flying the plane mm-hmm. and Blue Ivy mm-hmm. in front of the mirror. And I sat there and I said, this guy, you'd rather see a Carter reality show than a great Carter concert. That's the mentality that we're on now. We care about the shit that really doesn't matter when it comes to performers. I don't care. I really don't care about Beyonce's personal life like that. I care that she's a great performer. I, well, I agree with that. I don't care about Jay. I've never cared about Jay-Z's personal life. I always love Jay-Z the rapper. I don't, if that's, if he wants to show us in his family life, great. But I don't really need that in order to say, oh, it was a good show. I right, but Jay-Z yeah. of yesteryear to today, I mean, the guy doing Tom Ford and all of these things, it's like, it was a very produced show. Can you at least admit what is that? Wrong with Can that? I say one thing about seeing Jay-Z live? Because I did see him live and the one thing that I remembered about it and I thought it was phenomenal. I thought his energy was great. Like how he could be a low energy performer that could still rock a crowd. I was mm-hmm. really impressed. Mm-hmm. But what I remember is at the end of the set he started calling out people in the audience. I'm sure this is something he does every single time. He does it every time. But he, but for me he was calling out these people in the audience and it don't matter if he does it every single time the people are going to be different every single time. So when he goes, yo, blue shirt, I saw you singing all the lyrics. I mm-hmm. appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And then I got to look at this person in a blue shirt who just had an interaction with fucking Jay-Z, Jay-Z. And see this person who's probably been the biggest Jay-Z fan for the last fucking 10 years literally express that excitement. Like, I got to look at that. And that, I I literally kept that moment. And that's if a great too, point. It, but my point is, if, if it's so planned... That now he's doing that, but there isn't really even anybody in a blue shirt. And I, you know what I mean? Like, if everything is so planned that I don't feel that excitement for them and we don't feel this connection. I'm with you. But it's still planned. It's like, I think that's what that's what they wanted him to do at MetLife Stadium, but he can't because the show is so tight. The show's three hours long. The show, it, I mean, and they do what? Like 40 it's, something songs? Yes, it's, it's tight. So oh, he's wow. dead, dead moving in and out. Yeah. There's no time to be, yeah. hey, you in the blue shirt. I don't have time for that tonight. Sorry. So right. guess what I got to do? MetLife Stadium makes some noise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jersey, Jersey makes some noise. That's what I got to do. Yeah. I, under, I understand. All I'm arguing is, and I haven't seen the show. I'm sure it's fantastic. It All was I'm, great. I'm just saying that that, that human connection that you were talking yes. about, that that we feel with each other, mm-hmm. and it's just you feel that, 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 that actual moment where you feel connected, maybe... There wasn't that. Maybe. There was. I mean, for me, it was not there. And I mean, honestly, and my husband is so clueless when it comes to things in entertainment. He thought Janelle Monet was Bruno Mars. So he has no <laughs> clue. He saw. No, they, I'm not she kidding. might be. He has, honestly, he has no idea the about person. this stuff. But even he said, he goes, you know, I felt, he goes, I felt like it was a little bit like fabricated, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like, we, and we've gone to Jay-Z shows. I mean, since mm-hmm. we were, da- we almost went to Australia to see him with you two. Like, that's how bi- we're fans, you you know, and I said, "Yeah, it kind of left me like, where was that? Like, where was that moment where?" We I really feel at? like we Sorry. forgot. I forgot. I feel like we've forgotten how to be great, man. No, it's not. I really feel that. What makes you? But I'm not saying that I didn't want them to do well. No, explain because, that to me though, because I, the guy. I mean, I'm going back to this article. The guy said in the article that when he, they saw the home videos of Jay Z and Beyonce, he felt like it was he, they were almost from this universe or even on this planet. And I said to myself, and I actually wrote something uh, about it, like. Yes, they are from this planet. They're just people who have put in way more than 10,000 hours. Yeah. I can't even imagine how many hours. Mm-hmm. That whatever they does looks excruciatingly perfect when they're on that stage because that's what they do. It's like watching Michael Jordan on the basketball court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't lose. Yeah, he, ex- once, he, once he got to that point, he didn't lose. The expectations. He's, so um, yeah. he's amazing. We're, we People can still be great. And you know what? And, and, and one more point. Yeah. Look at somebody like LeBron, right? LeBron's dope. Best player of this era. He just don't look as flawless as Jordan did. Fair. Yeah, so, yeah. so so being that he didn't look as false as Jordan did, we don't give him his just due. We but don't give him his just we due. We should. Like, we should. Yeah, yeah. But be because he's not two and five, because he's flawed, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, he's not as good as Jordan. So what are you saying? You saying you want flaws, and you don't want people to be. You want wrinkles in the fabric. You relate to flaws. You you relate to flaws more. So why people don't connect? Why 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 he got to go back to Cleveland and us for to be like yeah. We connect with him again. No, it makes it attainable, I think. Yeah. It it makes it attainable for the people who are fans and who have put, you know what, if if I'm a fan of of Jay-Z and Mm -hmm. I've gone out and I've spent my hard-earned money on his albums and, and, you know, buying the merchandise and things like that, I want that. 
I want to feel like there's something there like that that's attainable that I can like connect with. This attainable thing we were talking about, or I want to get to this that, because we were talking about this earlier. And I think this really relates to it. But real quick, my, my brother went out to see this band called Fish. You guys know Fish? Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's a fit. Oh, so he's a stoner. Uh, Greg, yeah, Greg's nah, a stoner. stoner, but you yeah. know he'll, he'll smoke some weed. But uh, <laughs> but he saw this, and Fish is this really popular band that people go out and it's a what's called a jam band, which means they'll play their songs, but then they break up into you know, just a riff that is in the moment that all the musicians just know how to play together. And I think the reason why they have this crazy following without even putting out new albums and people travel from state to state yep. to see them. And I think it's because those moments are unique to that show. And you tell the other fish heads, you missed it in Sacramento when they were doing this And th- he this stopped one. playing guitar and they switched instruments. And it's like you, they created that unique moment mm-hmm. that, that you feel fucking you and everybody in that room is feeling the same emotion, and it's like, holy, it's like James fucking Brown, dude. James Brown, you know, is a jam band in himself. You don't even know what the fuck this guy is saying, but you don't know what he's going to say next. Yeah. So you're like, bro, are you feeling what I'm, f- I don't know what he's saying. All I know is that he's into it, I'm fuck. And I'm just, feeling it, and yeah. I'm doing things with my body that I didn't know that I could be even do, yeah. you know? There's, that's there's, what it brings out of you. And so, it, there, mm-hmm. so it isn't only negative, I guess that's my point. You know, there is positive that we relate to and, and are attracted right. to. I, re- I relate to greatness. I want to well, see because people... you think you're great. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's my whole point. Well, you only feel insecure about it when you can't relate. But you... what we're saying, no, I don't feel is... insecure about it, though. That's the no, difference. No, he's making a great point. Yes. Because cause this is to what we were speaking about before the podcast. We brought up, and I thought Usher was a better point, but uh, we brought up Megan Fox. And Megan Fox is this beautiful woman who's dating this guy named Brian Austin Green, yeah. who is, you know, he doesn't have the same success, you know, or isn't on the same. He was on, on 90210, That's Justin Silver. Exactly, yeah. Justin Silver, 90210, mm-hmm. but he's not like Megan Fox hot. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I was like, you know what, I think that's a good thing that he's dating, that uh, she's marrying him, because it makes every other guy go, you know what, if he could hit, I could hit. Yeah. Right. And then you brought up Usher, which I thought was great because Usher has always dated these older women. Yeah. And what that does is allows his female fans to go, you know what? I bet I could fuck Usher. All the because I think he he has mommy issues, though. I would say like, yes, agreed. Yeah. You but, know, but still, because I, I do say, you know, I do think that a lot of times if a guy, for example, if a girl is dating Brad Pitt, all of a sudden all the dudes that love her go, man, I'm not there's no way I can fuck. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. I'm just unless I'm over you see it. his dick. Unless you, and he's his got dick a little, little dick. Yeah, I Does can feel he really? That. Dick talk. Dick well, <laughs> now, let's have a dick dick oh good. Okay, let's I, go. I don't know if Brad has a little. I dick. hope he does. But I'm saying he if it's Brad, exactly. That's he what I'm. He can't have it all. Yeah. I mean, exactly. exactly. It's Fuck just he, there has to be something wrong. Now, this, now I'm being a contradiction right now. Why can't he have a big dick? Because why can't he have it all? Why can't he just be as close to perfect? Because he's a millionaire. He's a successful actor. He has Angelina Jolie. Listen, man, he's got a big dick. No, that's why Angelina Jolie got so skinny. Why to make his dick seem fatter? (laughs) <laughs> Whatever she makes us feel better. All that weight. This is what he does. He puts his dick up against that skinny little pipe wrist of hers yeah. that she got, and he goes, "Damn, I got a big ass Huge, dick." Right? <laughs> That's her charity work for him. Exactly. That's like she's into Fuck charity. Haiti in Africa. I'm gonna get Fuck my little black skinny. babies they adopted. I'm gonna keep my wrist little so my man's dick feels like it's huge. That is so long. But That's to great. what you were saying about about relating to greatness. Some people need, you know, self-deprecation to feel comfortable with that person. You see this with comedians. You yeah. see a lot of the, you know, some people need uh, famous people to, you know, fake humility, mm-hmm. you know, to do the whole, you know, I didn't know how I did it. You know, uh, you know, we won, we won the game, but honestly, it was just my teammates. Yeah, I did score 60 points and uh, my teammates actually only scored about seven. But, you know, without them, I couldn't do it. They need that to deal with their, the fact that they don't feel great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel great. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who do feel great out there. So you don't care if a motherfucker goes, you know what? I scored 60. I bust my ass and I had a great fucking game. Yeah. And that doesn't intimidate you. That intimidates a lot of people. Yeah, and exactly. they don't like that. Because they know they can never score 60. Right. Exactly. And they need the vulnerability. They need that humility in order for them to be like, oh, he's not better than me. Listen, that's another thing we need to talk about. What's that? Because me and my homegirl was having this conversation the other day. And... She says that she she you know she always says there's nobody better than me. I don't care how much money they got, what they do. And I was like, no, yes, there are. There's, there's there are people. some people that are just better than you. They, yeah. I'm not gonna say we're better. We're all human at the end of the day. But I can't play ball like LeBron James. No. Yeah. I can't rap like Eminem. 
I'm, I'm, I can't create like Steve Jobs. Sure. Well, but what did I say when I was living in L.A.? There's always going to be someone prettier, smarter, with a better yes. body. You know yes. what I mean? But it's all about owning who you are. You are the best you. It, nobody, nobody else can, can be you. Nobody can do That's you better it. than you. Exactly. So you just do you. Even if you are shitty at basketball. Right. You're the best you. So if people fuck with you, you're the best in the in the you know apartment league. You know, it's like yes. well, just or, own or that. Not even in apartment league, like you're the best you. You just need to figure out what you're great at. Ex- some people are yeah. great at gardening. Some people are great at fucking radio. Some people are great at uh, comedy. Right. Some people are great at uh, hosting TV shows. Yeah. You need to find out what you and then people will fuck with you because nobody is better at you. This this, than the, you. this is the analogy I use. God is our father, right? We're all brothers and sisters. It's this big ass Christmas tree. It's mad gifts under the tree, but everybody got one gift that can change our whole life. All of us. Yeah. Some of us find our gifts before others. Some of us see other people with their gifts, and we be like, "Yeah, good job. I'm find mine." Some people be like, "Fuck, man, why you find his before mine, man? He don't deserve that." Right. But Some, those people will never get anywhere. Never get anywhere. They're gonna be stuck under the tree looking for other things because Absolutely. they're too busy looking at other people's gifts. Yeah, you, you you started looking at everybody else's gifts and talking shit about yeah. how they got it before you and why they got it and they don't deserve it. That you stopped looking for yours. Yours is under there too, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you celebrate Kwanzaa, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you're left you, out. You, you don't get a gift. You can't relate to this, okay? So you just uh, have fun with your candles or and whatever if you're the Jewish, fuck. You have eight gifts. There exactly. You, go, you so. have eight gifts. You better figure out which one the fuck that's it is. It. It's right. <laughs> and that is a great. Now that I think about it, that is a great. That sums that, it all that up. That was right beautiful. beautiful. That, that right was. there sums it all up. I no, feel like seriously. You had a moment. No, no, no. Is that, a, that it? Really? That. Was a great racial food chain that summed it all. Do we go? Is like, this where we go out? Ronda don't got no gifts. Yeah. No. <laughs> Jewish people got eight gifts. Eight gifts. <laughs> Doctor, accountant, lawyer, and everybody else is Ancient. just looking. <laughs> <laughs> you got eight candles, bro. You better That's pick it. one of them. And you got yeah, definitely. There's something in there for you. So yeah. now we got to get back up to speed with Carolina. Oh my gosh! No, really? Elvis. Okay. You quit, Elvis. Yes. You go to the couch. Yeah. Couch. Gets canceled, or whatever. Yeah. Now your name keeps popping up when it comes to being on the cast of the View. Oh gosh. You look in the New York Daily News. You look in the Post. You hear uh, Rosie O'Donnell. She's back now, right? Yes, Rosie is definitely signed. Yeah. But you always mm-hmm. hear Carolina Bermudez, Angie Martinez. Yep. Um. Um. Who's the other? Sunny Hostin. Sunny Hostin. Yeah. I even saw like Ross Matthews. Ro- well, they were. I think that they were flirting with the idea of having a male on the show. <laughs> I mean, nobody knows. Right now, they're in a, a period where it's just nobody knows we what they're going to do. Some dude, talk. No. Well, you know, I Ross think that. Ross is good. It, Ross is is a fantastic guy. He's a really wonderful person. But, but he's I think not that, offering the male perspective. Well, he's offering a gay male. He's perspective. working the gay so, male perspective, but he's not offering the dude. I don't. Want I don't it. think they. I don't think they're I don't want looking for. That's yeah. my point. That's yeah. what I just said. We yeah. don't want to hear some dude. Like I don't want gay male male. I don't want that on the view. Yeah. yeah. Actually, well, that's not the vision that Barbara had, and I think mm-hmm. that something that she has said before is that they don't know. You know, I, the times have changed, and and they've flirted with the idea. Listen, I'm not on the inside. I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen. Girls so talk. I think I think girls are more comfortable. Around other women talking. Yeah, just, you don't want some dude there that yeah. maybe wants to fuck, and then now the girls are trying to compete with, you know, with right. him for his affection. Or a gay male who is possibly just as difficult as uh, another woman. Exactly. Now, you know? or who's siding with him. And who, yep. Just let the girl, it's, you know, it's just like a bunch of, when there's a bunch of dudes talking, and there's no girls around. We're the most relaxed guys in the fucking world. I think guys need girls around to take the edge off, though. No, I, it's like cocaine. Like you need a little cut. What? No, <laughs> what? I think like for real. I th- no, I think it's the. I think it's just like cocaine, only the opposite. When we're just hanging around dudes, there's mm-hmm. no girls around. We're fucking around. We're playing the video games. We don't do shit. Right. When there's a, a, you put a hot girl in the room, all of a sudden it's yo. Why are your jeans so tight? People that you start puffing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. You start, Why are your jeans like, so tight, bro? Huh? Yeah. You sucking dicks on the weekends? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's what you do on the weekends. You suck a lot of dicks, bro. You fucking dick sucker. Hey, Shelly, look, he sucks dicks, huh? Huh? I'm more desirable than him, aren't I? This dick sucking oh guy God. over here. But you have to do it to like clown him to make yourself yeah. look to make better. myself look better. Mm-hmm. So that's why we unless do... we really look ridiculous and we right. deserve to be clowned. Well, if you're wearing like, like capri Jordan. yeah, like how Envy was dressed up, <laughs> capri, capri pants funniest. with a that pink tank top. He said you look like a bad bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny. If you're um, listening right now, go to Charlemagne's Instagram. See and the please. God. C T H A G O D. Yes, go to see the God on Instagram oh, and find great. the fucking Instagram video he took of Angela uh, Yee and MV. Dressed and alike. Fantastic. Holy shit. He's wearing a halter top. He looks it's like beautiful. he's on a fucking WNBA team. It was so <laughs> good. <laughs> so, how'd your name get in the pot of the view? 
Uh, well, I've been on The View twice. Okay. And so um, anyone who really is going on right now is basically up for, I guess, consideration. And mm-hmm. so, you know, to have my name in the pool is extremely, extremely, you know, uh, humbling. And, you know, I'm just I, I'm just glad I got to check something off my bucket list. You know, I always said I wanted to be on The View. Mm-hmm. I got to do that. You do know? you want it? Um, I, I think you'd be crazy to not want it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't think that me sitting here and saying, yeah, I could, whatever. No, it's one of the greatest gigs on the planet. Yeah. Uh, every woman in broadcasting wants to do it. You'd so. be great for it. I, well, I thank you. That's You're not intimidated. Kind of We're talking fucking no. crazy shit. No, you don't totally. get intimidated. No, I love it. I mean, this is what I was born to do. relatable. Yeah. yeah so. You're the perfect balance of ratchetness and righteousness. Well, exactly. I mean, you bring on one of my, you know, hood people and it's on. Yes. You know, so I- And you're from middle America. I am. People don't realize how important that shit is. People, but I'm a, I'm a Latina uh, from Ohio. You so rarely, you rarely make is, it from the major cities. You know that, right? <laughs> What? You're a Latina from Ohio. That's a, that's rare. Yeah, it's is it, rare. You know how yeah. rare it is? There were six families where I grew up, you know, in Warren, Ohio, a small town. Yeah. Where'd y'all get and, Goya? Um, what? Did y'all ever have Goya? Goya? No. My mom would have to go to Miami and bring it back up. And she was wow. like, you know, super wow. happy because they didn't have anything like that. Yeah. Um, you but were no, one of those six families? We were that, one of those six people families. people were complaining about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember no, loud noise. They no, were. I remember white people were talking about that. They were like, know. they will never sleep. No. I know, right? They're throwing parties all the time. Uh, no, so we were like one of like, I, I don't know, like six families in that area. The saddest Puerto Rican Day parade ever and, is in wherever you're from, Ohio. <laughs> it was like one Just flag. one flag, <laughs> six people, a bowl of rice. One flag they passed amongst our, every household. Exactly. <laughs> I know. No, Your so, turn. You go first this year, Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So, yeah, um, I mean, just being a Latina from Ohio and just having that relatability, I think, is, is so different. You know, I mean, I grew up in a predominantly white area. There were, you know, I, I went to a private Catholic high school mm-hmm. and I was one of very few ethnic, you know, women there. So, um, it's, so yeah, it definitely taught me a lot. Besides the ethnic thing, I'm just talking about being from middle America mm-hmm. and, and relating to that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a huge advantage. Yeah. You know, because people who grow up in the city, like like myself a lot of times, are jaded. About very. The, we don't know the real Delu- world. I don't call it jaded. I call it delusional. Delu- no, we're delusional. Right. They think They think New York is a planet. Yeah. Not even New York. They call Brooklyn Planet Brooklyn. Right. Because a borough in New York thinks it's its own planet. Yeah, yeah exactly. But the, I mean, for me, it's like growing up in this small town where everybody knows your name. Mm-hmm. You go to the Walmart and they say, have a great day and they mean it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that for me, it's I, I pride myself on having Midwestern upbringing because it's it's there's something to be said about it. You know, it's a great thing. It is. It's a beautiful thing. And so. um, So, yeah. Anyway, you, you know, got we'll, it. See. we'll see. I what think, I, I, think <laughs> that, I think I believe it. How well, do you feel? I, I listen. I believe in Carolina Bermuda is three hundred and sixty percent. She's true. You guys. Like I think Thank she's you. incredible. I think she's super smart, super talented. She's a great mother. Yeah. Thank you. She's a great wife. For your kids. Yeah. I have one baby. How old? A little guy. He's 10 months. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is 10 yeah. months That's after? my future lawyer. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll show you. He doesn't look anything like me. He's a white baby. He's like white, blonde hair, blue eyes. Well, you're very light. He, but my husband is white. Okay. So he's like white, Jewish, and I'm I'm lighter. But, um, but Wait yeah. Wait a minute. This is you 10 months this after is having me a 10 baby? Months. I know. God I'm still bless. working. I'm like Feet still... look great. Yes, I, <laughs> she's a 10-month-old baby, and you're knocking the ash <laughs> on the feet, bro. <laughs> No, she got a ten month old baby. Like, yeah. Shout so, out to Mark. Mark's a good Mark good guy. Mark is a good guy. He and he's fertile. Great. Shout out to Mark. Yeah, on, that's on right. I don't know what you was waiting so long to come in for. Though, right? I mean, you should have you been shot that club up, Mark. Like, what the, what the fuck? Oh my God, you're embarrassing me. Well, th- no, but thank you for the compliments. I, that means a and She's got an amazing me. mouth. You haven't complimented her mouth. Look at her mouth. <laughs> no, listen, that I feel like is going too far. This Do you is, know what I mean? It, they're all mine, by the way. Really? So, yes. This is all uh, yours. Are you kidding me? But yes, I don't do anything like that. No, Except my boobs. My, my boobs are fake. You did get fake boobs. Yeah. Did you get those in Arizona? Because you said Arizona was a plastic I state. got these in L.A. after oh, I left I Arizona. Yeah, yeah. So. You just had a lot of disposable income to blow when you had no fucking job. <laughs> How could you afford boobs in LA? <laughs> boobs in LA. She I got the Miami dad. beach house. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What? 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 Hold on, your what dad is, your fa- you is your family royalty in Nicaragua yeah. or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you own the quinoa plantation in fucking Nicaragua? <laughs> 
That's, <laughs> they, you know, all the quinoa we get in America is from her fucking family. That's what all that like, green, real. all that shit. No, um, my no. dad actually, it's a beautiful story. My dad's an immigrant. He yeah. came here when he was 14 years old. He had yeah. basically like $100 in his pocket, and yeah. his parents really believed in him. They thought that he could make something of himself. So they sent him to America and um, didn't know one word of English. He would sit on the curb outside of his aunt's house who let him stay with with her and um, would read the dictionary until she came home because she wouldn't let him in without because she thought he was so dumb that he would, might mess something up. And, and it um, wasn't that he was dumb. He just didn't know the language. No, he just didn't know the language. Jesus exactly. Christ, no, she was, she was oh very God. cool to him. You know what? That's, and, why, um, that's why immigrants succeed in this country. Well, he he wanted it. And he um, he's a pulmonologist. He just retired. What's that shit? Uh, he's a lung doctor. Lung doctor. And work. so, um, you know. Oh, you speed it now. You went from him sitting on the curve reading the dictionary to him being a lung doctor. Yeah. How did when, that happen? When did he work at Home Depot? He didn't work at Home Depot. <laughs> that's what I want to know. When were people putting him in the back he of the truck? He wasn't hanging out outside <laughs> the Home Depot. fixing you. You know what's funny? No, 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 you know what's funny is he's fixing your house and shit. All of a sudden you cough and he's like, I think you might have a problem with your lung. I you're think wheezing. it might be you, you got a little something. Oh my god, you're crazy. No, um, Maybe some emphysema. He um he went to school in San Francisco and um he just he he grinded. He went through it. You know, he had my my mom and my father got married when she was seventeen. He was twenty one. She moved over here Turn too. Up. Mm-hmm. When did she move? Did they meet over here? They met over here. Yeah. Your mom's so, white. No, my mom's Nicaraguan. Oh, so, they're both Nicaraguan. Yeah. yeah. You're so, full Nicaraguan. I'm full Nicaraguan. Wow. First okay. generation American. You spoiled yeah. ass American. Hold up, San Francisco. They met each other. Mm-hmm. Do you know the Vindels? No, I don't. Maybe they do. I they guarantee they possibly they could. No, Pretty, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. But, but yeah. Nicaraguans. I just want to tell you, spoiled ass Americans who take everything for granted. Please. That's how you're supposed to use your freedom. Yes. That is how you're supposed to use your fucking freedom. Great. This guy came over here from Nicaragua, read the dictionary, went to college, and became a London. And on his own and didn't have any help. I mean, and, and actually, the beautiful part of the story is that he had four brothers and sisters at, in, at home in Nicaragua, mm-hmm. and he was working to support them and my mom and my brothers and sisters when they started having them. So, I mean... But he didn't bring any of them over here. Yeah, he did. Oh, he did Yeah, eventually. he did. Eventually, everybody How many came of them? over. All Everyone. of them? Mm-hmm. I wow. still have cousins and uncles and, you know, other family members in Nicaragua, but that was like his his goal was to bring all of his family members here. And he did it. And he's, All the ones he liked. Everyone that he loved. He the did ones, it. He the did ones it. that were teasing him back in the day. Right. Yeah, but I mean, he was a kid when he came here. Think about yourself at 14, you know, yes. and to have Tina that. Yeah, I was a spoiled little ass entitled American who needed to be tagged. Exactly. I was abusing my motherfucking <laughs> right. freedom. Where's the dark gun? Yeah, you know? I was it's smoking like... weed and carrying guns and shooting at people and yep. selling dope, abusing my fucking freedom. That's it. I really believe that. I believe whenever I see a, like a white homeless kid, I want to take his... Um, uh, his white skin away from him. He's such a waste of good white his, skin. He is a waste of good white skin, but I, I want to take his uh, uh, citizenship and give it yeah. to a Mexican. Oh, are you kidding me? Please. Because you can use that shit. They're fucking doing something. There's drive. There's drive there. Yes. You know, there's there's a reason why people want to come to this country, and it's because it truly is the land of opportunity. And I always tell people, and I know that Diddy has said this or he had a shirt on, but it's the truth. Like about my family, I'm the youngest of six. We're all professionals. We have all worked our asses off. And I say, we we are the American dream because of my dad and because of everything that he went through and my mother my mother you have to give her a ton of credit for being home with six kids and raising us the way that she did you know um, you don't find that anymore you yes. know I when mean you, you really don't when you abuse the opportunities that America gives you when you abuse the freedom that America gives you and you're not trying to contribute to your own American dream and you're working on becoming America's nightmare we gotta get you the fuck out of here totally dog. adios totally. Just, we, America's got too much fucking freedom this is what I'm trying to tell people that's right that's inter- where, where can we put them <laughs> where are we gonna maroon these people I really I'm, I'm about that shit where <laughs> could we we need to start like that remember you know remember when LA Australia? broke off LA, no, Australia was a prison colony right. for England. Yeah. We, but that, which is so, there's so much irony in that. That could the be The fact that England is the worst climate ever. And it was the most beautiful place that they could possibly send them. <laughs> People were stealing shit to go there. Exactly. I know. I would have been like committing major crimes to go to Australia. But what are we going to do with these fucking people? Why don't we just remove them? Remove them, dump them off someplace, put cameras there, and just have that as an ongoing network that we can go to and watch for our own entertainment and be like, you see, this is why it's these like motherfuckers. New World Star yes. Island. <laughs> World Star Island. <laughs> World Star Island. Yes.
Yes. It's just World fight star after fight. fucking island. Oh. And it's got to be cold there. <laughs> cold as fuck. Yes. Cold as shit. Frostbite. Everybody. Yes. Ooh, yes. Hilarious. All right. Oh, my God. Is this the cue? Yeah, I think this oh is Oh, my it. gosh. You guys, this was awesome. This was amazing. Yo, thank so you so much, much for coming. Oh, this was great. Carolina what are you uh, promoting? Um, nothing. I'm just, I get to come hang out with the brilliant idiots. This yes. is like, this and made my week. And you see you on The View. When well, does The View start up? I don't know up? yet. I don't know. We're talking into Listen, existence. Carolina's yeah. in between <laughs> blessings right now. I am. I'm That's definitely. A beautiful way you, know, you know, You never know where you're going to hear me next. It could be uh, behind the microphone, yeah. maybe. Would you, you ever know? come back to radio? Absolutely. Wow. I would absolutely do. I never wanted to leave radio. So for me, it was it was a really difficult decision. But um, if the right opportunity came along, I definitely would come back. Have you put any feelers out there? Yeah, there's. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool, so cool. I know what that means. All right, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right at, at the real Carolina on Twitter. Not Carolina at the real Carolina. How long have you known me you for? Spell you Carolina. Carolina. But that you just. I'm sorry. At the real you, Carolina. If he doesn't you. say it, Cara, uh, even if it's Carolina, they're gonna spell That's it like so the offensive. fucking. That's so offensive. The first time I saw her, like on my Twitter, I was like, "Who is this hot ass chick that says she works in the building?" Because I, I first, people when thought when we were having an affair because of the way that he would like hug me, and somebody said something to my husband, and my husband was like, "I know where she comes home to every night." He's like so secure with himself, and like, really? yeah. And then he met Charlemagne. He loves him. Isn't that He's offensive? like, oh no, I was fucking with him so bad. I was like, look, Mark, they're giving away free blowjobs at the bar. You need to take care of me, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor. No, he's he's a really good dude. But thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank this you, was Carolina. such a pleasure. Yo, and thanks. I anytime you want me to come and display my feet for you, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. why you still have time. Exactly. I because know. Because right? you're not gonna have time when this next opportunity presents itself. Well, God willing. Now Schultz, you got anything to plug? Uh yeah. I'm I'm gonna be uh next week I'm gonna be in uh, Chicago, Schaumburg Improv. Man, I hope you make it back from this safe. Yo, man. Me I'm praying too, for you. Man. Oh, my I will, gosh. oh I'm, you know what? I got to do some kind of sneakerheads tribute. Go and see Mike, the statue of Mike, in front of the Bulls Arena. Dope. We got to talk about that. No, I'm not going with you. No, no, no. But oh. you might have to Skype in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, I have no reason to be in Chicago. Um, the whole city of Chicago need to be tagged. That's true. They, 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 they really, <laughs> that's what a tagging needs to start. <laughs> they just need to tag every kid in Chicago. Yes. Oh, this is great. All right, so yeah, so we're there. And then we got the World Star Hip Hop uh, Comedy Show up at Foxwoods on uh, August 23rd. Yeah, August 23rd. And it's what not about, what you think. What about Bevels? Oh, Bevels. yeah. You, make, make sure you check out, uh, you know, this Bevel. Uh, you know, get is Bevel. this my com. gift? Do I get to leave with this today? Yes, absolutely. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, shave your pussy, boo. That's, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what if that was the commercial? Yo, talk about thug life. We need to do a commercial for Bevel so where we up. give out Bevel shave razors to girls and we go, here, shave your shave pussy, your pussy, boo. ma. Get that shit looking like a Ferrari. <laughs> oh my Bevel god! Bevel gets your shit looking nice. Too late, too late. I had laser hair removal. It's all, it's all good. You had laser. You yeah. put lasers in your vagina. Absolutely. So it's permanently bald. No, no. You got oh. the strip. God. It's Mark good. is so fucking it's lucky, good. man. What do you have there? Just I an M for Mark. That, after. that <laughs> mouth and a permanently bald pussy, and she's smart. <laughs> God bless. Oh my God, Mark, you're the man, Mark. Oh, oh yeah, shout out to Mark Grossman. Yeah. I don't All even right. know who you are. All right. So uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast and um, you learn something and you think we're brilliant, you're right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we don't know shit and that we're all a bunch of idiots, you're right too. Amen. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. 